Hello learners. In this entire series of lectures, we'll be taking up module four, uh, which is about concrete mix proportioning, and we'll try to understand them. We'll be beginning with the concept of mix design with and without admixtures. We have understood what is admixtures, right? If we try to use make, if we try to make use of admixtures, the water content is going to come down, and as a result of that, we are going to get more strength. So based on that, we'll try to prepare the mix proportion. Then also we'll try to understand variables in the proportioning and the exposure conditions. Uh, when I tell of exposure conditions, there are many exposure conditions according to Indian Standard 456-2000 code book, where we have mild exposure, the moderate exposure, severe, very severe and extreme condition. It depends where exactly you're going to construct your building. So you can see here, right? We have prepared a concrete here. But before preparing this concrete, we need to understand what is the uh, quantity of cement we have taken, what is the quantity of a coarse aggregate we have taken, what is the quantity of a fine aggregate, what is the quantity of water we have taken, right? Once we take all those things in the proper way, and finally, when we try to prepare a concrete, this is the final product what I need to do. So to put it in a better way, we can understand this in something in this way so this is for the veg lovers what we have is a paneer biryani and this is for the non-veg lovers what we have is a chicken biryani so whenever we try to eat chicken biryani or let us say paneer biryani we also want that quality to be good right the rice should be good the aroma should be good it should taste well and all isn't it so in the same way whenever we prepare the concrete also we also want the same thing here when when the final product arrives at the site and all when we try to it has to flow properly there shouldn't be segregation it, it should be workable in nature it should give us the required strength for which it which, which it, it has been intended for right so this is all about the concrete mix design but how do you do all these things right we need to when i prepare a concrete something like this i should be knowing how much amount of cement sand and all i have taken similarly when i prepare a chicken biryani or let us say paneer biryani i need to understand how much amount of rice i need to take how much amount of paneer i need to add how much amount of chilies i need to add right all these things we need to understand only then we try to understand that and we try to prepare in that way this is the final product what we get right yeah so to understand this in a more better way now look here so for, for example if you want to prepare a chicken biryani these are the ingredients that we need to take there are so many ingredients in that but when it comes to concrete mix design we have fine aggregate coarse aggregate cement plastic uh, admixtures and all so if i want to prepare a concrete something like that this is the final proportion what i need to take that is cement i need to take 256 kg per cubic meter we always do proportioning in terms of for per cubic meter then GGBS, I require 172 kg per cubic meter. Water, I need to add 155 kg per cubic meter. Fine aggregate, I need to add 770. Coarse aggregate, I need to add 1099. Chemical admixture, if it is required, I need to add 4.31 kg per cubic meter. And finally, the water cement ratio, what I need to maintain is 0 0.36. And these are the steps that you need to consider. And then we'll try to come with this final product. This is my final mix proportion, right? And once I prepare this, this is my final product. This is my concrete, what I get. If I try to uh, prepare a concrete with the help of the cement, GGBS and all, this is my final product. Same thing is with this also. When you prepare chicken biryani, if you try to follow all these things, if you try to add all these things, and there are certain steps also, if you try to prepare all those things, this is the final product what we get. Then how do you do all those things? We have certain steps, right? Suppose if you want to prepare a chicken biryani, this is a step given. Prepare saffron and kevra water. Similarly, if you want to prepare a concrete mix design, here is a step given one. It's a step one, which is written target strength for mix proportioning. That is F dash CK is equal to FCK plus 1.65S. That means if I want to prepare M35, let us say if I want to prepare M30 grade of concrete, so this is my target strength. I need to add, I need to get 30 Newton per mm square as a strength in my concrete. Then what I need to do in the FCK, I need to put 30 here plus 1.65 into S. S is a standard deviation. So again, we need to refer all this table which is given in the code book. Now, if I want a 30, if I want to prepare this M30 grade of concrete, you have to look for 30 grade and the standard deviation what is given is 5.0. You try to put uh, 1.65 into 5 here. So this will be my target mean strength. This much amount of strength I require. So based on that, then we'll go for the step two. Again, in the step two, we need to follow another thing about the water cement ratio. Similarly, when it comes to cooking also, we have step two and all, right? Yeah, but our main target will be to understand the mix design for the concrete. And these are the steps that we have. 
now the next question that comes to our mind why we need to study all these things right because normally when we do the local construction and all we don't think of all these things right if i tell a contractor or the normal labor to prepare him a concrete he will does it in a very better way then why we need to understand all these things so when see when you are constructing a normal structure like a g plus 1 g plus 2 up to 3 even let us say g plus 4 then we don't require to think so much about all this concrete mix design right but imagine you are constructing a statue something like this the statue of unity and where the strength of the concrete is somewhere close to 40 to 65 mega pascal that is 40 to 65 newton per mm square so in that case you cannot uh, simply prepare a concrete and try to pour and finish this complete uh, you know construction you need to understand how the concrete mix design is prepared you need to understand whether the mix design what i have prepared whether whether whatever the concrete i have put up here whether it is able to give me this much amount of strength or not so all these things we need to understand so that is the reason we need to understand or we need to uh, learn this concrete mix proportioning and how it is done similarly if i take uh, uh, the construction of the burj khalifa here also they have made use of m50 grade of concrete in fact they are made is of uh, self consolidating concrete we'll try to see what is self consolidating concrete in the chapter 5 and you can see it here also right so again whenever we try to prepare such concrete we should also make sure the same strength is achieved in the site also so this is this is the place where actually the concrete mix design comes into play now who does all these things so there are few people i mean there are many people uh those are beyond all these things because when you want to prepare m40 m50 grade of concrete you cannot simply call a contractor and tell him to prepare that will not happen so you need a certain concrete technologist or who has lot of experience in this particular field of preparing a mixed proportion and we will do lot of trials and after the trial we'll try to come to a conclusion for this particular structure this much amount of this much amount of cement fine aggregate sand water i need to put right right so only then that quality will be achieved it's something like see uh, when i say of chicken biryani the first things that come to our mind is the hyderabadi chicken biryani so the person who prepares that the chef who prepares that he has enough experience in preparing that so every time he prepares that chicken biryani uh, the taste it, it should taste good right it's not that today it will taste good tomorrow the taste will not be good so every time he has to you know uh, make sure the taste will come out good so he has that much of experience in that similarly when we go for a co this uh, concrete mix design and all we approach lot of there are many people who are very good in uh, uh, preparing the mix design i have taken two of them so one is uh, uh, shaiju nayar sir he is he is having almost 20 years of experience in concrete technology and he has done more than 500 concrete mix design for various projects and all and also we have professor manu santanam sir who is working in iit madras uh, who who has who has, who has done a tremendous work in the field of uh, concrete technology in the mix design and all so what we do is we approach uh, such people and we ask them to prepare a concrete mix design for us right even most of the iits they do all these things if you are going for m30 m40 50 grade of concrete uh, you just have to tell them and there are certain whatever we we are going to learn in next 3 uh, 4 lectures the same thing they try to prepare but only things they have experience based on that uh, the outcome what they get will be good right so these are the things that we need to understand right so i hope you have got an idea regarding what is concrete mix design why we need to do that right so all considering all these things what we are going to do is from the next chapters on concept of mix design so far we have understood but still we'll try to see from the textbook point of view so one of the ultimate aims of studying the various properties of the materials of a concrete the plastic concrete and the hardened concrete is to enable a concrete technologist to design a concrete mix for a particular strength and the durability right whenever we try to prepare a mix design let us say m20 m25 m30 40 grade of concrete uh, our main intention is to get that final strength and also from durability point of view mix design can be defined as a process of selecting suitable ingredients of concrete and determining their relative proportions with the object of producing concrete of certain minimum strength and durability as economical as possible as far as pos possible we want strength also durability at the same time it has to be economical also the design of concrete mix is a critical task as it depends on widely varying properties of the available constituent material the prevailing site condition and the required quality of a concrete for a particular work right so it all depends on what kind of cement you are using what kind of sand you are using what kind of coarse aggregate you are using and where exactly you are doing the construction right as i mentioned uh, whatever construction you are doing in bangalore uh, and whatever mix design you are prepared to that particular site when you go to the some other part again there the mix design is going to change because based on the sand what you get there based on the coarse aggregate what you get there it's a completely different thing so that is what you mean by here 
that is available constant material the prevailing site conditions the required quality of a concrete for a particular work right if you're doing a very good uh, uh, what you call uh, important building there the quality of your concrete should be good but if it is a small construction and all there we don't give so much importance for the uh, concreting work so this is how it is all about and the last point is design of concrete mix requires complete knowledge of a properties of ingredients and working experience with the concreting operations as i shown you in the previous uh, uh, lecture uh, about those people who are having a lot of you know experience in this uh, particular field and also you need to understand uh, in the properties of the ingredients like the sand right in sand also we have different sand nowadays we are making use of manufactured sand then we are having a river sand and also coarse aggregate uh, water the quality of water also we need to take into consideration the types of cement you are going to use we have different types of cement we have understood what is ordinary portland cement ppc cement uh, then we have uh, low heat cement and all right so this is all about the concept of mixed design you can see it here also uh, these are the different uh, grade of concrete anyhow we'll try to understand this in the next lecture but to get a small idea the we have already seen m stand for mix and phi is the characteristic compressive strength suppose if i want to prepare m5 usually m5 we don't use nowadays uh, either we normally for the pcc we try to go with m7.5 or m10 suppose if i want to prepare m10 grade of concrete then i need this is the ratio that i need to follow that is 1 is to 3 is to 6 whereas one part of cement i need to take three part of fine aggregate and six part of coarse aggregate similarly if i want to prepare m15 this is the ratio what i need to take similarly if i want to take m20 this is the ratio i need to follow if it is m25 then i need to follow this ratio that is 1 is to 1 is to 2 right these are the different uh, ratios what we have and based on this we try to prepare the mixed design yeah now coming to the objectives of the mixed design first objective is that the first objective is to achieve the stipulated minimum strength and durability the second object is to make the concrete in the most economical manner the mixed concrete is designed keeping in mind the site exposure conditions as i mentioned we have mild severe and all the concrete mixed design is prepared as per standard of supervision available at the site work to achieve the minimum strength and durability and the last is the concrete mixed design is prepared to arrive at the value of standard deviation of variation to be used in the mixed design we'll try to see what is standard deviation and all in the upcoming lecture so this is a you know uh, objectives of a mixed design now what are the factors that you need to consider for the mixed design first is the the characteristic strength requirement of the concrete like what exactly you want to prepare m35 m40 m45 m50 n60 m70 what grade of concrete you want to prepare the type of cement influences the rate of development of the compressive strength of the concrete right if you are using this uh, fly ash and all slag based cement and all uh, right in the in the concrete then the strength initial uh, strength you're not going to gain there but if it if it is ordinary portland cement and all the quick strength you're going to get if you go for rapid hardening cement extra rapid hardening cement and all but when you go for this uh, pozzolana based cements and all uh, initial gain of strength won't be there after uh, seven or let us say 10 days that uh, strength gain is going to happen next is maximum size of aggregates to be used in the concrete may be large as possible within the limits prescribed by is 456-2000 also we need to understand about the aggregates what we need to use maximum when we go for the rcc construction 20 mm size is the maximum size what we use for the construction right next is the cement content is to be limited from shrinkage cracking and creep point of view um, uh, and also how much cement you have to use minimum and maximum that is given in indian standard code book we'll also try to see that then the workability of a concrete for the satisfactory placing and compaction is related to the size and shape of a section quantity and spacing of reinforcement and technique used for the transportation placing and compaction and also once you prepare the concrete mix design finally we need to check the workability also that means how much workable is my concrete whether i can place the concrete in the site whether suppose if i prepare a concrete mix design tomorrow when i start to pour the concrete in the slab it should be flowable in nature right uh, it, it should flow on its own it should not segregate and all so all these things uh, comes into play for us because only preparing a concrete mix design will not help you along with, once you prepare that from application point of view also we need to check whether my concrete is workable whether the segregation is happening or not i mean segregation should not happen right whether it is uh, durable and all not we need to check all those things yeah now coming to the type of mixes we have we have actually two type of mixes one we call it is nominal mix sometimes they have certain standard so we call as call them as standard mixes and the second one is called as design mixes so when we speak of nominal mixes we have this m5 m10 m15 m20 even m25 also you can write it here okay let me do that we we'll not write m25 in this design okay we'll keep m25 in design also and here also you can write m25 
M25. Yeah. So nominal mixers are sometimes called as standard mixers because here the ratios are fixed. We saw for M15 it has to be 1 is to 2 is to 4. For M20 it has to be 1 is to 1.5 is to 3. So here the ratios are fixed. So we call that as standard mixers. When it comes to design mixers, we'll try to design the mix. We are not going to take any fixed values for the cement, the sand and all. As we saw uh, there, uh, we try to make use of this code book and we ourselves will try to mix design. Let us say M25 we have in the code book that is 1 is to 1 is to 2. But most of the time we actually try to go for mixed design only for M25. And beyond M25, we don't have any ready-made values like we have for M10, M15 and all. We have to go for mixed design only. Up to even M100, M70 if you want to high performance concrete and all. Then you have to do the mixed design, right? So this is all about the different type of mixes. So if they ask you what are the type of mixes, we have nominal mixes, which is also called a standard mixes. Then we have design mixes. Under the nominal mixes, we have all these things. And um, under the design mixes, whatever is beyond M25 grade of concrete, everything is design mix because we don't have any specific value for that. We ourselves have to design that. When it comes to nominal mixes, here we have ready-made uh, ratios for that. We use that and we try to do that. And this M5 usually we don't use. We have M7.5 and we have M10. So the 7.5, 10 and M15 what we have. These three grades usually we use for PCC work or let us say for inferior kind of work where suppose if you want to give a uniform surface, let us, we'll say no bed concrete we need to put. So in that case, we try to go with this kind of, with this grade of concrete. But when we put the real RCC structures and all, let us the footing, the column and all, then minimum we have to use M20 grade of concrete, right? So. This was all about the type of mixes and all. So in the next lecture, we'll try to see the difference between the nominal mix and design mix, how it is practically done, uh, what all things that we need to consider and all. Those things we'll try to take in the next class. What is nominal mix design and what is what is nominal mix and what is design mix? So far we have understood that there are two types of mixes, a nominal and a design. So coming to the nominal mix, these are those mixes whose proportion of ingredients are fixed. That is, for example, M7.5, M10, M15, M20, and M25. We have the certain uh, ratios for that, right? For M20, we know it is 1 is to 1.5 is to 3. For M25, it is 1 is to 1 is to 2. For M15, it is 1 is to 2 is to 4, right? Yeah. So here, the ratios are or the ingredients are fixed here. The ingredients are mixed based on the volumetric basis. That means we try to make use of volume batching here and not the way batching based on the volume. Let us say we'll take a bucket and with the help of that bucket, you will try to uh, put the cement, the, uh, the sand, uh, the coarse aggregate and the water. So it, based on the volume, we try to do the measurement. Hence it is called as volumetric. Next coming to the design mix. These are those mixes whose proportion of ingredients are not fixed. That means suppose if I take, if I say M30 grade of con concrete, then I don't know what is the ratio that I need to use. But if I ask you prepare a M15 grade of concrete, you're not going to ask me another question. Tell me the ratio for that because M15 is known to everyone that it has to be 1 is to 2 is to 4. But if I ask you for M30 or M35 grade of concrete, the very next question that you're going to ask me is tell me the ratio for that because those ratios are not fixed, right? Hence, we've written here, these are those mixes whose proportion of ingredients are not fixed. The ratio of proportion varies from place to place depending upon the quality of the materials, the grade, the company of the cement available and all, right? So here when we speak of M30 grade of concrete, let us say, I want to prepare M30 grade of concrete. Now, I don't have any ratios fixed. Now you need to tell in which place you're doing the M30 grade of concrete. Suppose if you're doing an M30 grade of concrete in, let us say, Bangalore, then in which place in Bangalore? Let us say somewhere in electronic city. Good. So now in electronic city, what is the quality of a sand you're getting from where you're bringing the cement? What is the source of water from where you're bringing the water? What is the source of your coarse aggregate? All these things we need to consider. We need to do the testing on all these things, right? Once we do the testing on all these things, and then we'll prepare a mixed design. And once we prepare a mixed design, finally, we'll come to a conclusion. Let us say I want to prepare the mix ratios are 1 is to 1.8 is to, let us say, 2.3. So this is the final ratio what I'm getting. Now, I did this, this ratio I got in Bangalore. Let us say I went to Ahmedabad now. So in Ahmedabad also, I, I need to prepare M30 grade of concrete. So there also, will I be getting the same ratios there? No, because you need to tell me in which place in Ahmedabad, right? 
let us say somewhere in sanand i am going to do my construction fine so then what is the fine aggregate you are getting whatever fine aggregate you get in bangalore in the electronic city may not be the same fine aggregate what you get in uh, amdavad in the sanand area right let us say fine aggregate you have to tell what what zone of fine aggregate is that you have to tell me the course of a a course aggregate from where you are going to get we have to do the testing on that what kind of course aggregate it is if you are bringing a water you have to check the quality of a water what is the ph of the water how is the quality of the water and water and all and finally if you try to prepare a mixed design let us say i am getting some 1 is 2 let us say 1.5 uh, let me take this as 1.9 and let us say 2.6 is what i am getting so this and this will never match because since it is a design mix i am a designer right and based on the materials that is available and based on the site condition this thing will change but whereas in nominal mix the moment i say m15 let us say i am in bangalore I'm, and if i say m15 grid of concrete i need to prepare it's 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 you will not ask me another question similarly if you go to delhi and if i say you to prepare m15 grid of concrete again you are not going to ask me question directly you will take 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 so here it will not change from place to place here directly it's understood but when it comes to design mix it will change from place to place based on the materials and all yeah so next is here the tests are conducted on each and every ingredients and only after that the ingredients are used right in the nominal mix we don't do any testing and all whatever material is available we try to make use of that and we finish off our concreting work but when you go for design mix each and every ingredients right from the cement the fine aggregate the core secret each and everything we have to do the testing we need to check whether they are passing our indian standards or not and only then we'll try to use them in the mixed design the grade of concrete from m25 m30 m14 above are usually design mix m25 we have a ratio sometimes uh, we consider that into a nominal mix but most of the time m25 we go for a design mix we don't take that 1 is to 1 is to ratio in fact we try to do it so i put it in the design mix and whatever is above m25 we all we do that we do uh, mix design for that so for high rise structures and all it is always mandatory to use design mix right when we go for a g plus 10 15 20 uh, high story buildings and all we always go with a design mix the ingredients are weighed here and then the concrete is designed using is 10262 2019 code book here it was volume batching but when it comes to design mix mix design we always do weigh batching right why we do weigh batching is that so that when i say 1 kg if i'm if i'm stand if i'm in bangalore and if i say 1 kg of cement you are going to take 1 kg of cement if you are in delhi and if i say you to take 1 kg of cement you'll be taking 1 kg right so it is a way batching but if you go for a volumetric batching so in bangalore if i tell you to take a cement you may take cement in this particular container right and if you go to delhi in, in delhi you may not be using this cylinder let us say you are going to make use of uh, you know uh, gauge box or something like that there your volume is going to change right so there that uh, weight will fluctuate i mean the volume is going to fluctuate but whereas in way batching no nothing is going to fluctuate 1 kg is 1 kg everywhere so that is why it is a more accurate method of uh, doing the batching so usually we go with the way batching and in design mix always we follow the way batching right now to put this in a more better way what is nominal mix and what is design mix it's a very simple way of understanding whenever i say nominal mix is it's like you go for a straight shopping and all sometimes we see this right fixed rate no bargaining the moment i say m15 it's understood 1 is to 1.5 is to 3 there is no bargaining and all it's directly done so right directly let's say 100 rupees you pay him 100 100 rupees and you take this clothes from him that's it done but when i go for mixed design now you go to this shop and ask him what is the cost of this uh, t-shirt now we will tell uh, it's a uh, 200 rupees right so that is the rate what he has given now we will try to check the quality of that material right you will try to check the quality of that material you will check each and everything of that particular dress what he is showing you and now based on your experience you will come to a judgment whether paying 200 rupees is worth for that or not or based on your bargaining skills what you are going to do instead of paying him 200 rupees you will pay him like 150 or 160 rupees and you will bring that similarly when we go for mixed design and all we try to see the quality we try to see the uh, what you call uh, the ingredients like fine aggregate the coarse aggregate and all based on that quality we try to prepare a mixed design and when we try to prepare a mixed design we already see a good uh, concrete technologist is required who's having a lot of experience based on the experience he is going to give a very economical mixed design for me right so that's how a nominal mix and a design mix can be understood in a better way so design mix there is no fixed price based on the bargaining skills based on the quality of that and all you try to bargain and bring it 
but when it comes to uh, nominal mix it's very straightforward 100 rupees is 100 rupees pay and come back fixed price one is to one one is to one and a half is to three or one is to one is to two whatever maybe that's right so this all uh, very rough way of understanding what is nominal mix and what is design mix yeah now coming to the main difference between them so we'll go one by one yeah so in the nominal mix the ratio of ingredients are fixed that is cement plus fine aggregate plus sand plus coarse aggregate uh, and water and this we have un understood that it is m10 m15 20 and so on so in the design mix the ratio of ingredients are not fixed but they are designed based on the testing each materials by using this code book so the mix is obtained by volumetric batching here we make use of way batching no quality control is followed here and no individual testing of material is done but here we always go with a strict quality control each and every material will be tested according to Indian standard and specification and the bulking of uh, coarse aggregate and the bulking of a sand will be taken care here. No slum test or workability and cube testing is done here. Usually we don't do in normal construction. If you see everything is nominal mix, people don't try to do this uh, slum test, the cube testing and all. But when you go for design mix and all, uh, always uh, whenever the concrete will arrive at the site, the first you need to do the slum test and then we are going to do the cube testing once you prepare the cube. You try to do the testing on that and we try to verify the results that you get in the lab and on the practically on the site. And here usually we assume that whatever concrete we are preparing, it is fit enough to gain the strength. There is no guarantee of that. That's it. But here we'll try to justify that with proper lab tests and all. Once you prepare the cube testing here, you try to make sure whether the uh, strength what you're getting is correct or not. If you have designed your concrete for M35, after 20 days when we do the testing on the cube, you should make sure that 35 Newton per mm square, more than that strength is etched on the uh, real structure. Her material used is usually cement, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, water. These are the normal material what we try to use in nominal mix. But when it comes to design mix, along with that, we'll try to make use of plasticizers. Then we can go with the pozzolanas like fly ash, GGBL, super plasticizers, and so on. Here it is used for the concrete of grade up to M20 and less. Normally for M20 and less than that, we usually go with a nominal mix. But uh, for this can be used for any grade, but we don't try to do mixed design for M15 and M20. It's there, it, those ratios, whatever we have, we try to go with that. Beyond M20, like M25 and all, we usually go with the design mix. Plasticizers are used here to change the properties of the concrete and to reduce the water content. We have understood that why plasticizers will be used, right? So this is all about the difference between the nominal mix and the design mix. Yeah, so we'll see a video of this, how it is done. So you can see it here. It's a nominal mix what we're trying to do. Here everything is volume batching. These people are uh, taking coarse aggregate. We have cement back kept here. There's a sand stored here, right? And uh, see this guy is making use of this two bucket and this two bucket is going to fill. So everything is volumetric batching here. So you're not going to do any quality testing, uh, whether the cement, what has come to the site, whether it's of good quality or not. Th nothing is being tested here. So whatever is arrived at the site, we are doing it. And also, you can see here, this is also volumetric batching. They have certain proportions fixed with them that you have to put 50 kg of one bag. For that, you will be putting three or four you know, buckets of this particular sand and another uh, five or six buckets of the coarse aggregate. That will be its mixed proportion. And then water, they don't have control over the water. We'll see that. And this is the concrete what they are prepared. Every time the concrete what you get here, it's not a good concrete. I mean. The, uh, the quality is not maintained here. Now it is more workable. Like it has a lot of water content in this particular, but still we try to use that. There's no quality control and all. And uh, look here, how they're putting the coarse aggregate and all. Sometimes they will come with full uh, bucket. Sometimes uh, half, 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 sometimes will come with half bucket. And wh while they're coming from here, most of the aggregates will fall. And also the best part is about the adding water. Uh, there is no look at the quality of the cement this time it is totally flowable right again there is no quality control over that and also we can see it here how they are trying to add water so half of the water is fallen here and again half of the water so this every time 
a different uh, liter of water is added here so there is no uh, you know great quality over the concrete but that's what i told here we assume that the strength the strength is achieved because once you prepare a cement once you add cement or a sand and all some strength will be achieved and we say that we are going to gain that strength right but when it comes to uh, design mix we finish this yeah but when it comes to design mix we have certain batching plants ready with us so from here the proper quality the proper quality control will happen if 50 kg of cement has to be added, exactly 50 kg of cement will come right and then if uh, let us say 100 liters of water has to be added 100 liters of water only will come and the whatever aggregates you are going to use here everything the moisture corrections and everything will be made here and then whatever concrete you are going to get it will be uh, taken with the help of a transit mixer to the site where the concreting is done a lot of quality control will happen here and once the concrete reaches the site again there again you need to do testing of that like we are going to do the slum test and all so this is the concrete which has come from the batching plant let us say and once it has come they'll take this concrete and then they are going to do the casting of a cube and then they are going to do the compaction for this and also slum test has to be done and once you done do the slum test and all only then we are going to allow the concrete then we are going to do the curing of this for 20 days then we try to do the testing on that right so all this here what will happen proper quality control is there and we'll make sure that concrete what we are used after doing a cube testing that the same strength is achieved there because here we try to verify the results whereas in nominal mix we never try to do that we assume that the strength is gained over there right what are the grades of concrete and the exposure condition and we'll try to understand them so when it comes to different grades of concrete we have understood we are nominal mix and design mix now coming to the grade part see we have one thing here just which is called as a group then we have grade designation and the specified characteristic compressive strength so usually m10 m15 and m20 grade of concrete what we have we we consider them as a ordinary concrete right but whenever it comes to m25 m30 m35 m40 and so on up to m55 we consider them as a standard concrete these are called as standard concrete then when it goes beyond m60 65 70 75 and 80 we consider them as a high strength concrete right when uh, like we saw in the construction of the burj khalifa and the statue of unity uh, there they went somewhere close to m60 m50 m60 m50 it was standard concrete but if you go for beyond m60 and all it comes as a high strength concrete and here you require uh, and here you require the importance of the concrete mix design and all right yeah now coming to the characteristic compressive strength we know when i say of m10 m10 for mix and 10 is that compressive strength what i require so this is the strength what i require at the end of 28 days that means if i am preparing a m30 grade of concrete let us say then when i do the cube testing that means i'll prepare a cube for that particular grade of concrete and after 28 days that means i'll do the curing up to 28 days and after 28 days if i take it out and if i try to do yeah let us say this is a cube what i have done and after 28 days when i take out this cube and when i put a compressive test on this and if i try to test three specimen the average of that should be greater than 30 newton per mm square only for us right if it is less than that then we cannot call this as a characteristic compressive strength of that if it is more than that only then we can consider whatever mix we have prepared it has gained this 30 newton per mm square yeah and then as i mentioned this is that meaning of characteristic strength the characteristic strength that is fck is defined as the strength of a material below which not more than 5% of the test results are expected to fail that means if i take a, let us say i am preparing a m30 grade of concrete right and if i do testing on 20 cubes if i do the testing on 20 cubes 19 cubes should get a strength more than 30 newton per mm square and one one cube out of this 20 one cube may get may get a strength less than 30 you can see the meaning of this one in 20 if you are testing 20 cubes out of 20 cubes 19 cubes should get a strength more than 30 newton per mm square and if one cube gets a strength less than 13 
less than 30 newton per mm square then also it is okay for us then only we consider this as a characteristic compressive strength now out of 20 let us say 15 got more let me clear everything yeah let us say out of 20 out of 20 let us say 15 got strength more than greater than 30 newton per mm square and uh, remaining five got a uh, strength less than 30 newton per mm square so according to the definition of the characteristic compressive strength out of 20 at least one can fail i mean one can be less than 30 but here what has happened five has uh, got strength less than 30 then we cannot consider this particular thing that is m30 grade of concrete what we have prepared we cannot call it as a characteristic compressive strength of that in that case we have to change our mix design or maybe we have to do the retesting i mean re we have to do the cube testing again right so that is then it becomes only the compressive strength when i say characteristic compressive strength then this much thing it has to proceed i mean this much uh, strength uh, that is out of 20 only one can fail rest 19 have to get more than 30 newton per mm square strength but usually when we do all these things we do it for 100 cubes right so this five percent what you can see you know for 100 cubes we try to do that means 95 percent you should get more strength and only five percent can fail that means when i go for 100 cubes if i do the casting of 100 cubes then out of this 95 should get a strength more than 30 newton per mm square and five cube may get a strength less than 30 newton per mm square in that case also we call this as a characteristic compressive strength so instead of doing 100 cubes it's very difficult to do 100 cube uh, casting and then uh, do for you know uh, try 95 should gain more than 30 newton per mm square instead of that what we do you can make use of this 20 cubes and out of the 20 cube you can test it so this is a practical meaning of the characteristic compressive strength of the concrete yeah next coming to the exposure conditions so see whenever we put a structure we have different kinds of structure now look at this particular structure this is one of a bridge what they have here this concrete columns you cannot call them columns okay uh, let us say these are the piers what i have so they are constantly in uh, touch with the water right here the exposure condition is different because it is in the uh, middle of a sea so it is always exposed to the sea water and all look at this bridge also here also it is in between the river so again it is exposed to the water right so let us say if you're constructing house and all, house is not uh, in contact with this uh, river water and all, isn't it? So that exposure condition is different. So we have different exposure condition. One is we call it as mild. The second is a moderate. We have severe, then we have very severe, and then we have extreme condition. So what is, what do you mean by all these things? If it is a mild, then concrete surfaces protected against the weather or aggressive conditions and the normal house and all what we do no they are not built in so aggressive condition it is always uh, protected against the weathering and all when it comes to moderate concrete surface sheltered from severe rain or freezing wet concrete exposed to the condensation and rain concrete continuously under the water concrete exposed to non-aggressive subsoil or groundwater or coastal environment then we can consider this as a moderate then we have severe so concrete surfaces exposed to severe rain let us say if you're going to the northeastern part of india so there the structures what we have uh, there always it will be rainy only right so there what will happen your concrete surfaces are exposed to severe rain alternate wetting and drying or occasional freezing now freezing and all then severe condensation in that case and also uh, uh, structure which is completely immersed in the sea water and all then we consider that to be a severe condition then we have very severe concrete surfaces exposed to sea water spray corrosive fumes or severe freezing conditions right so here and all what will happen this is a very severe condition where my concrete structures are exposed to sea water spray and all right again also if you're putting up a nuclear power plant those things and all it all depends what is the exposure condition and all and then extreme the worst condition is concrete surfaces in the tidal zone the offshore structures and all what we try to put no they all kind of come under the extreme condition members in direct contact with the liquid or solid aggressive chemicals concrete surfaces exposed to abrasive action for example like machine metal tired wires uh, vehicles or water carrying solids and all so all this comes under the extreme condition so based on our exposure condition we will try to decide what kind of grade we require and for that particular grade we are going to design our mixed design now let us say um, i have a moderate condition so for the moderate what i need to do yeah so this is given in the code book of is 456 2000 you can refer this also clause number 8.2.2.1 so these are the exposure conditions and these are the environment right yeah 
Now let us say my environment is something moderate. So if my environment is a moderate, then what is the minimum grade of concrete that I need to use? Then minimum I have to use M25 grade of concrete and maximum water cement ratio I have to use 0.5 and minimum I have to use 300 kg per cubic meter of the cement. Similarly, if I'm putting a, a structure in a very extreme uh, exposure condition, then minimum I have to go for M40 grade of concrete and maximum water cement ratio has to be 0.40 and minimum cement content should be 360. So based on the exposure condition, we'll try to decide what should be the grade of my concrete. And for this grade, based on the materials that is available and all, we'll try to mix design it, do the design mix. Next is design specification required for mixed design data required for mixed proportioning. Now. Uh, what all are the data that require? First is we need to understand the grade designation like we saw now. What grade you want? M20, M25 based on the degree of control required at the site. Second is types of cement. What kind of cement you are going to use? Whether you are using PPC, whether you are going to use OPC and all. The third is maximum nominal size of aggregate. What 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 is the size of the aggregate that you are going to use? Whether it is 40 mm, 20 mm, 10 mm or so. Then the maximum or the minimum cement content, which is usually expressed in terms of kg per cubic meter, which is given in the code book, we have seen that. Maximum water cement ratio based on the requirement of the different exposure condition. Just now we have seen no? for M20 maximum is this much, for M40 maximum it is 0.4. So that also we need to take care of. So these are the data what we require while we do the mixed design. Workability depends on the placing, right? If you're going for a pumpable concrete and all, their workability should be more. If you're going for the flooring works and all, there you don't require much uh, workability. So based on your work, we need to uh, decide what kind of workability is required. Exposure condition, we already understood now. Then maximum temperature at the placing, right? If you're, if you're doing the concreting in a cold weather or a hot weather and all, then again, their the mixed design should be different. Next is method of transporting and placing, we already understood, right? Uh, if, if it's a pumpable concrete, if you have to take a concrete to the, let us say, uh, 50 or 60 feet height, in that case, what should happen? Your concrete should be a bit, uh, you know, pumpable concrete. Otherwise, it will not, you know, uh, go to the top of top, right? If it is a um, very harsh concrete and it's difficult to go to the top. So again, you need to tell what kind of method you're going to adopt to place your concrete. Admixture, what kind of admixture? Because admixture plays a very crucial role in the mixed design. So based on the ex uh, admixture, we are going to fix the water cement ratio and all. How much workable my concrete should be. All those depends on the admixture. Next, next is types of aggregate, whether you're going to use angular aggregate, rounded, or what about the grading, whether it's a well-graded or a poorly graded and all. And the last one, what we have is a degree of supervision. Yeah, what kind of degree of supervision, how you're going to place the concrete, whether the degree of supervision is good, normal or something like that, right? So sometimes they're going to ask you uh, the data required for mixed proportioning. These are the things that we need to write. And, uh, you know, uh, all these points you need to e explain. Now, from where you get all these things, we'll try to see that. Uh, this is a uh, IS 10262 to the 19 code book. If you see here, data for mixed proportioning, whatever I explained, you know, same thing they have written it here. You can go through that, it's written here. And then whatever we are going to learn from here onwards, these are the different uh, grades of concrete, what they have. We'll try to refer all this code book. These are the graphs, we need to understand the graph and all, how the mixed design is carried out. And then, uh, yeah. Then they have some solved examples here. Yeah, these are the solved examples what we have, right? And we'll be doing all these things for M40 grade and those things, how we have to understand all the procedures. What are the different methods of mixed design? And also we'll try to see what is the entire procedure of pre uh, preparing a mixed design. So coming to the different methods of mixed design, the first one, what we have is the Indian standard recommended method, which is IS10262. Uh, 2009 is the code book what we have, but it got revised. Uh, instead of 2009, we can make it as 2019. So this is a new code book what we have, right? Yeah, make it as 2019. The second method what we have is uh, ACI method, whereas A ACI stands for American Concrete Institute method. Third one is Road Note 4 method, which is a UK method. Then we have IRC 44 method. This is IRC stand for Indian Road Congress for the construction of the road and all, we usually refer this particular uh, code book. Uh, then we have arbitrary method, we have maximum density method, we have finest modulus method, surface area method, mixed design for high strength concrete, that is a separate thing for high strength concrete. Then we have mixed design for pumpable concrete, 
and then we have doe that is a british mixed design method right so these are different methods what we have but we have to concentrate only indian standard method which we are going to follow is 10262219 code book now procedure of a mixed design has per is 10262 uh, as i mentioned either 2009 or 2016 So this method of concrete mixed design consists of following eleven steps. First is calculating the target mean strength of a mixed proportion. That means let us say you want to prepare M forty grade of concrete. So that is my target, right? Forty newton per mm square is my target strength. So first I need to take care of that. Second is selecting the water cement ratio. To get this, what is, what is the water cement ratio you need to take? It may be zero point three, zero point three five, zero point four, and so on. Next is based on that. Once we get that, we are going to get the water content for that. Then once you have that water cement ratio, you are going to get the cement also. That is, water cement ratio is equal to zero point four. Let us say, if you cross multiply, you will get water and the cement contained. Next is finding out the volume proportion for the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate because water is done, cement is done. Next is coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. Next is the mix calculation. We have to do all the calculation for that. Next is trial mixing. Now, once you prepare all these things, you are going to get a ratio. Let us say one is to one point three is to let us say two point six. Then you have to do the trial mix for whatever ratio you are prepared. You need to check that for the slump test. I mean, for the workability and all, whether it is going to give us the proper slump or not. If it's not happening, then we have to keep on doing the trial mixing. Then the workability measurements. That is, with the help of a slump cone, we need to check the workability so that uh, the proper slump is achieved. Next is repeating seven and eight until all the requirements is fulfilled. So unless and until we get the proper mix, we need to repeat all these steps, right? So this is a very basic way of understanding the uh, mix design. Now going to the procedure part. Yeah. So coming to the procedure part, the step one is target strength of a mixed proportion. That is F dash C K is equal to F C K plus one point six five into S, right? So this is my uh, where F C K is the characteristic compressive strength at twenty eight days, and F dash C K is a target average compressive strength, right? And now let us say if I want to prepare M twenty five grade of concrete, then here in the place of F C K you are going to put twenty five plus one point six five into S. S is a standard deviation. Now what is the grade of my concrete? Twenty five, right? For twenty five grade of concrete, what is the standard deviation given here? Four. So you have to multiply this one point six five into four. And you are going to get one answer here. Always remember, whenever we do the mixed design, if my if I want to achieve a grade of 25 newton per mm square, I always target it for the higher value. I'm I'm not going to design my concrete for exactly 25 because to be on the safer side and all, no. We always if it is 25, I try to make my concrete for at least let us say 30 newton per mm square. Mm square. So at least when it reaches the side, when we do the construction and all, at least we are going to get more than 25. So that is why you can see F C K plus 1.65 into this standard deviation is what we are getting. This is F dash C K. That is a target average compressive strength, right? Yeah. So once this step is done, next we are going to do the selection of the water cement ratio. So for preliminary calculation, water cement ratio has given in I S 456 table five. We need to take that based on the uh, different environmental exposure condition. You can see it here. First, we have to check uh, where is my exposure condition. Let us say my exposure condition is moderate now. For this moderate exposure condition, or let us say my exposure condition is severe, then minimum grade I have to take M20 grade of concrete, and maximum I can go up to 0.50 as my water cement ratio. It's a maximum free water cement ratio. So instead of taking 0.5, you can take it as 0.4 or 0.5. It's totally up to you. There is no hard and fast rule. You have to take 0.45 only. You can take since it's a trial mix design. What we are doing, we'll start with some value. But code is telling that you cannot go beyond 0.50 water cement ratio for M20 grade concrete in a severe condition. This is what this code is trying to tell us. So we'll not violate this. We as far as possible, we'll try to keep it below 0.50 as my water cement ratio. Right? Yeah. So. This is your step two. Next, coming to the yeah, I did a mistake here. This water cement ratio, what we have, no, uh, we we don't have to look this plain concrete. We usually go for RCC. Yeah, what you need to know, look into this. Sorry for that. So let us say I'm taking a uh, moderate condition, right? Yeah, I'm taking a moderate condition. So the minimum grade of my concrete is M25. For this 
maximum water slip rate ratio what i have to go is 0.50 i should not go beyond that and this is the minimum cement content if you are putting a moderate exposure for m25 grade of concrete minimum you have to keep 300 kg of a cement per cubic meter so this is what the code is telling us right so this is a step 2 next coming to the step 3 selection of water content yeah so it's given here maximum water content per cubic meter of a concrete for a nominal maximum size of aggregate usually for the normal rcc structure we always go with the m20 uh, sorry uh, 20 mm size of the aggregates normal time that is why the maximum water content what is allowed for a 20 mm aggregate is 186 kg so whatever water cement ratio we try to take out from here that answer what we get no as far as possible we should try to keep it below 186 right yeah next is the water content in the table 4.5 4.8 what what i'm showing you here no is for the angular coarse aggregate and for 25 to 50 mm slump range right so this particular table what you can see here this particular table has been arrived for angular coarse aggregate and for slump value of 25 to 50 mm now let us say if i'm having a slump of 100 mm then i cannot use this value directly for that i need to do modification because the this thing because this particular table is done only for 50 mm slump right so in that case what we need to do we, since we are doing a error we need to put the correction factor so that is what you can see here the required water content may be established by trial or an increase by about 3% for every additional 25 mm slump or alternatively by use of chemical admixture confirming to is 9103 what is trying to tell is that for every 25 mm if there is an increase in the slump you would add about 3% right so let us say my slump is actually uh, let us say i have a slump of uh, 75 mm let us say i have a slump of 20 75 mm this table is done for 50 mm slump that means from 50 to 75 how much there is an increase there is an increase of 25 mm right and what is the correction factor it's given here for uh, every by about 3% per additional 25 for additional 25 i need to add 3% extra so that means 186 is what my code is telling this is telling this is for 50 mm but we are using 75 mm no so 186 plus uh, what i need to do 3% of that that 3 divided by 100 into 186 why it is 186 because i need to take 3% of this 186 186 is maximum water content right so with this what i'm going to get i'm going to get the estimated slump so the next once you are done with that the next what you are supposed to do is calculation of the cement content because we know water cement ratio water content by water cement ratio will give me the cement content we know that water cement ratio yeah we know water cement ratio let us say i have chosen some 0.4 okay let us see 0.45 i'll take now i need to find cement right so if i want to find cement what will happen the for cement content will be 0.45 Yeah, cement content will be water content divided by let us say this is zero point four five what I have taken right for my calculation. So what is this water? From here I am getting water is one ninety one point five eight. So you divide this one ninety one point five eight divided by zero point four five. That will give me the cement content in kg per cubic meter, right? So this is my step four. So so far what we have calculated, we got uh, water content, we got cement content. Next is proportion of volume of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate so this things we need to find now so how do we do that yeah before that one question you need to ask why is that the code is giving us the minimum cement content here and why it is giving us the i mean here in both plain as well as in rcc it's giving yeah one one thing i need to tell uh, i told you that uh, we need to refer for rcc okay suppose if you are doing for pcc that is plain cement concrete then you have to refer this table but for pcc and usually we don't go with this usually we put rcc structure only so always we'll be using this table the 4.7 okay yeah now again one thing why is that the code is telling us a minimum cement content this much minimum you have to use and water you should not go beyond this why is that uh, code is trying to put this restriction what is the reason behind that we'll try to see that so coming to the minimum cement content first is proper hydration and blocking of capillary pores because once you prepare a concrete and all no there should be proper hydration and blocking of whatever small small pores we have so that will be filled by the cement since cement is fine in nature to get that the code is trying telling us to make use of minimum cement content second is 
to get alkaline environment around the steel reinforcement. That is, we know that once we prepare a concrete, a concrete is highly alkaline. The pH will go somewhere close to 13. And for the pH to go up to 13, we need to have that much amount of cement. So that is why code is restricting us or telling us or imposing us that this much cement, minimum cement you have to use in this particular exposure condition so that my concrete will be alkaline in nature. So if it is alkaline, we know that there won't be any, I mean, corrosion cannot happen that easily. Next is filling up, up filling up fine pores with the fine aggregate because we know that, right? Whenever we prepare concrete, we want our concrete to be more dense in nature. Let us say this one container I'm taking. So if I'm preparing a concrete, first I'm going to put my coarse aggregate. This will be my coarse aggregate. So in between the coarse aggregate, what will happen? There will be voids. Those voids will be filled by whom? By the fine aggregate. So this will be filled by the fine aggregate, right? Now in between the fine aggregate, again, there will be voids, isn't it? So that has to be filled by whom? The cement, because cement is even finer than the sand, right? So those will be filled by the cement now. So if you if cement has to be filled here, that means that much amount of cement should be there in a mixture, right? So if that much amount of cement should be there, that is why the code is telling us to put this much minimum cement so that filling up fine pores with the fine aggregate. Last is to contribute to the cohesiveness and prevent segregation of the concrete. So why segregation happens if you don't add proper cement, if there is no good cement paste and all, the uh, aggregates will not try to bind each other. As a result of that, when you pour the concrete and all, no, there will be segregation in the sense your coarse aggregate will fall first and then the cement paste, since uh, your, mi your mix will become more harsh and all. So you get a lot of aggregates. So I don't want that to happen. And coming to this point is cohesiveness. As far as possible, my concrete, even though I'm making use of different ingredients like coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, water, uh, cement and all, at the end, they have to act as a single unit. They have to be cohesive in nature. And if they have to be cohesive in nature, cement is that particular thing who actually binds everyone, right? So that cohesiveness will come with the help of cement. That means again, that much minimum cement should be there. So these are the reasons why we need to, why the code is telling us uh, to make use of a minimum cement in the code book. Next is why maximum water cement ratio. Maximum what because we know that if you try to add, uh, if you try to increase the water cement ratio, the strength of my concrete will come down. We have seen that from the graph. First is low permeability for moisture and chemicals. If you're putting more and more water, what will happen? The permeability is going to increase. If permeability is going to increase, then what will happen? The water will try to uh, seep in through the concrete. So I don't want that to happen. As far as possible, I want low permeability. So that is why we are going to restrict the water cement ratio. Corrosion of the reinforcement. And the last one is a lesser depth for carbonation. We have understood what is carbonation in the chapter three, right? Uh, when uh, carbon dioxide enters the concrete, so that will react. And as a result of that, what is going to happen? The corrosion is going to happen, right? So in order to uh, safeguard all these things, the code is telling us to make use of the maximum. It's going to put us a, a bar on the maximum cement ratio and on the minimum cement content. Yeah, now going forward, next we are into the Step six. So this step we'll try to see in the problems only. Here it is a uh, bit difficult to understand because we have to check what, what is a coarse aggregate given and what is a fine aggregate given in which zone that fine aggregate is given. Whether the, my fine aggregate is zone one, zone two, zone three or zone four. And maximum size of the aggregate usually we go with a 20 mm aggregate only. For this particular 20 mm you have to check what zone is given. And based on that zone we try to take out these values, right? Next is, yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, the next one is a step six is for the mix calculation. This will try to see all this point later. Now it won't be, we are not, not in a position to understand this unless we try to solve the numericals. Next is step six about the mix calculation. Volume of concrete is equal to one cubic meter. Therefore, volume of a cement will be mass of cement divided by specific gravity of cement into one divided by thousand cubic meter. With this, we'll get the volume of cement. Coming to the volume of water, mass of water divided by specific gravity of water into one divided by thousand cubic meter, we'll get volume of water. Volume of chemical admixtures, if you're using mass of chemical admixture, divided by specific gravity of admixture into one by thousand. This will also give me, will give me volume of chemical admixture. Then volume of all in aggregates, all in aggregates in the sense coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, everything if you try to add together. So A, 
A is this one that is total volume of concrete. Whatever volume of concrete you have, no, in that you deduct B. B is volume of cement, right? Out of concrete, if you take out cement, C stand for water. And if you deduct the chemical admixture also, what is left out? Fine aggregate and coarse aggregate is left out. So that will give me volume of all in aggregate. That is whatever volume of concrete you have. In that you take out or deduct cement. In that you deduct water. In that you deduct chemical admixture. Whatever portion is left out, no, that is my fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate portion, right? Yeah. So next is coming to the coarse aggregate and the fine aggregate. How do you find that? Mass of a coarse aggregate is equal to E into volume of e in the sense this one whatever answer you are getting here no let us say you got answer as some um, let us say 0 0.6 or whatever it may be 0 0.6 into volume of coarse aggregate into specific gravity of coarse aggregate into 1000 kg similarly mass of fine aggregate is equal to e into volume of fine aggregate into specific gravity of fine aggregate into 1000 kg if you try to do this you are going to get each and every answer that means we'll get volume of cement we'll get volume of water admixture then we'll get volume of coarse aggregate, we'll get volume of fine aggregate. That's it. Come to step number seven. You have to put whatever answer you're going to get. No, put for cement this much kg per cubic meter, water is this much, this much kg per cubic meter, fine aggregate is this much, coarse aggregate is this much, chemical admixture is this much, water cement ratio. Anyhow, we have got it from the previous slides and all. That's it. Now, once you prepare this slide, now you have to check the workability. Now, let us say initially when I wanted to prepare this particular mixed design, um, the site people wanted. People, those who work in the site, they wanted a slump of around 100 mm. Okay. They wanted this slump of 100 mm. For that, I have done the design. And this is a design what I've got. Let us say some values will take randomly. Let us say I got 390 here. I got, uh, you know, uh, let us say 105. Okay. I'm taking some random 105. Let us say this, I'm getting some uh, 800. Let us say uh, this, I'm getting some 980. Chemical admixture, let us say. 230 and water cement ratio let us say i have taken 0.5 this is my final mix design what i got now i'll try to prepare a mix design of this. let us say one m cube of concrete i'll take and for that i'll prepare a concrete then once i prepare the concrete i'll prepare a i'll make use of this slump cone we have seen that slump cone and in that slump cone we'll try to put this concrete whatever mix design and then we'll try to see the slump of this concrete whether it's able to get a whether we are able to successfully able to get 100 mm slump or not if you are able to get this 100 mm slump, then first criteria is done. Second, we'll try to prepare the cube out of this and we'll try to do the test on this. Okay, for this particular mixed design, we'll try to do the test on the cube and we'll do the curing up to 28 days. After that, we'll try to do the compressive strength test. Let us say we started with M30 grade of concrete, right? So now after doing a test on this, I need to get a strength more than 30 Newton per mm square. Only then I can say that this particular mixed design, what I've done, it is fit and it can be used in the site for a workability of 100 mm and for a strength of m30 grade of concrete so if it if, for example if 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 you're not able to get a slump of 100 mm then you have to play with the water cement ratio or you have to play with the um, fine aggregate and the cement content you have to change the proportion of this again you have to go back do the same procedure even after doing that also if it's not happening if, if you're not going to get the strength, then completely discard this. Then you try to go with a different trial. Instead of taking water cement ratio of 0 0.45, you can go with 0. Point, let us say 0 0.42 or 0 0.43. Admixture, you try to add a bit more admixture. So you have to play with all these things. So this is called as trial and error method. Hence, it is written here, trial number one, right? So there are a lot of trials that you need to do finally to get all these answers, right? Yeah. So we will try to solve the problem on the mixed design. So we'll start like this. So this is a question what is given to us. Okay. Uh, the grade is already given. We need to make use of M40 grade. That is M40 grade of concrete we need to prepare. The type of a cement what is given is ordinary Portland cement, which is of 43 grade. The maximum nominal size of aggregate is 20 mm. We are using for it RCC work. The minimum cement content is given 320 kg per cubic meter. Right. Then the maximum water cement ratio, what we have to use is 0 0.45. Workability, we have, they have given us 100 mm slump. Okay, that means 100 mm slump you require. Uh, all these are from the site execution point of view. Okay, so these are the things what we usually uh, consider. Exposure condition severe. So when it says severe, maybe uh, somewhere in the coastal region and all, they are trying to put up the structure, right? We have seen that on what, uh, how we need to uh, take care of the exposure condition. Method of concrete placing is pumping. That is, maybe let us say they are doing some uh, high rise buildings and all. Okay, let us say they are doing some high-rise building and all. Hmm. Let us say. 
and uh, when you go for a top floor and all uh, you need to uh, pump the concrete with the help of a pump so that is a pumping right because we need to know what kind of uh, placing you are going to adopt if it is a pumping then we need to keep workability little high that means my concrete should be flowable right so all those things we need to ask the site people like how how you are going to pour the concrete whether it is with the help of pumping or you don't make use of pump you are going to uh, make use of the shoot the inclined shoot what we have seen right yeah then again next is about degree of supervision for degree of supervision we need to understand one point here see for a degree of quality control expected under the site condition this is called as degree of supervision whether it is very good good or fair so what is very good fresh cement from a single source and regular test you are bringing a cement from a single source and regularly you are going to test that way batching of all the materials aggregate supplied in single uh, sizes control of aggregate grading and moisture control control of water added frequent supervision regular workability in the strength test and field laboratory facilities right that means if you are working in some big companies and all we have certain uh, quality control checks and all every time the concrete comes to the site will be doing the slum test will be having a field laboratory also to carry out the compressive test and all uh, right then frequent supervision will be done like uh, the contractor will do, uh, do the checking once then we'll be having a client checking then sometime we also involve the pmc people right project management consultant that is a third party people they also come and do so here what is what is happening the quality control is expected to be very good right so that is why it is written very good here but when it comes to good carefully stored cement and periodic test here it was regular test periodically you are going to test your cement way batching for all materials controlled water graded aggregate supplied occasional grading and moisture test periodic check of workability and strength again it is a periodic check in uh, next is intermediate supervision and experienced worker intermediate supervision means you will be not uh, let us say you will not uh, involve the third party and all normal uh, contract and the client may check so here it is like a, a good uh, option next is fair fair in the sense proper storage of cement you are going to make is a volume batching here it was way batching and when it comes to volume batching of course, of course the quality is going to come down volume batching of all the aggregates allowing for bulking of sand way batching of cement water content controlled by inspection of mix and occasional supervision and test then you have to consider this as a fair so it you have to tell what kind of uh, situation uh, are you in right what kind of projects you are working based on this we are going to fix so here what they have given in the question is that uh, the degree of supervision is good yeah next is type of aggregate we are going to make use of crushed angular aggregate and we have seen that in angular aggregate the strength will be good there will be better in interlocking between them uh, right so they are making use of crushed angular aggregate maximum cement content this is 450 kg per cubic meter and chemical admixture yeah we are going to make use of super plasticizers right so so these are the uh, things what we need to uh, tell uh, those uh, concrete technologist or the mix designer about how we want it next coming the test data that means see we, uh, now when you do the concreting work and all you will be bringing the coarse aggregate you will be bringing the fine aggregate and all right so this people will come to the, your site and they will take the sample from your site let us say you have stored a coarse aggregate here okay let me do so he is going to come and take a sample of the coarse aggregate from here let us say something from here few coarse aggregate from here this sampling should be done only from one place you cannot take a coarse aggregate and do a test because uh, since uh, you don't know exact quality of that so you have to take it from different samples i mean let us say your stock no uh, let me draw in this way let us say this is a coarse aggregate what your stock okay imagine in a 3d way then few aggregates will take from here few aggregates you are going to take from here few aggregates you are going to take from here right and again fine aggregate also we have to take then all those things we need to take and we need to do the testing on that sieve analysis test and all those things so it's given here cement used is we are making use of opc 43 grade cement specific gravity we have to do the test in the lab so it has found to be 3.15 okay specific gravity for the cement we usually do with the help of a kerosene that we have that uh, flask and with it's a flask something like this okay and then we try to put uh, kerosene here because if you put water and test uh, water and test then uh, water will react with cement so that hydration will happen so we will not get the value only so we try to make use of the kerosene so with that we'll try to see the specific gravity first we'll put that then we are going to put the kerosene and by how, by how much amount it's going to get displaced that volume we'll try to find out 
then there are certain formulas for that. With that formula, we can find the specific gravity. Chemical admixture is given. Super plush is either conforming to IS9103. Again, when I speak of super plush, it depends on which company super plush is that you are going to use. Again, that also makes a difference from company to company. Next is specific gravity of coarse aggregate is 2.74 and specific gravity of fine aggregate is 2.74. Again, you have to take the aggregates, you have to do the CV analysis and all. Then you come to this conclusion. Water absorption in the coarse aggregate is 0.5% and water absorption in the fine aggregate is 1%. Next is moisture content. It is nil here. Fine aggregate also it is nil. CV analysis for the coarse aggregate. This is the table what they have given confirming to zone one and all those things, right? Yeah. So once these things are done, what we're supposed to do, we'll start with the target mean strength. How much strength we are supposed to get? We're supposed to get 40, right? So what we're supposed to do now, this is my formula. F dash CK will be always FCK plus 1.65 into S. So FCK is given 40 is the target strength. Now what you are supposed to do, put 40 here. In the place of FCK, I'll do it here. It's already done. Just see what I'm trying to explain. Yeah, F dash C k is equal to fck is 40 plus 1.65 into s s is a standard deviation now from where you get this standard deviation we have to see the values for standard deviation so for that give me a minute i'll open that yeah so this is a standard deviation assume standard deviation is what we have our grade of concrete is how much the grade of our concrete is 40 now for M40 grade of concrete, try to see what is the standard deviation given. So this M30, 35, 40 all falls under this category. And for this, we have to assume the standard deviation is 5.0. Simple. So what you're supposed to do, 1.65 into 5 is what you're supposed to do. So that's what they have done. 40 plus 1.65 into 5 we got from there. Try to do this manually. Okay. You're going to get 48.25 Newton per mm square. Right. Next is select of water cement ratio. So it's given that maximum water cement ratio we should take is 0.45. So what you're going to do now, we'll try to assume based on the experience, adopt a water cement ratio of 0.40, right? Now, this 0.40 is what these people have taken in this textbook. Now, it's not that you have to take 0.40 only. You can take even 0.41, 0.42 also, okay? No one is going to stop you. But since uh, they are based on the experience, when you try to do a lot of mixed design, you get certain uh, idea for this particular mix, uh, this is enough for us. So here they have taken 0 0.40, we'll go with the same value only, right? Yeah. So as per IS456-2000, for RCC work, maximum water cement ratio for exposure condition it is given. If it is a mild exposure, it has to be 0 0.55. If it is moderate, 0 0.50. Severe, it is 0 0.45. Very severe, it is 0 0.45 and extreme it is 0 0.40 from where we got we already seen that but still i'll show it once again for rcc this is table 4.7 for reinforced concrete this is my exposure condition mild moderate severe very severe and extreme so here what is given in our question so i'll go back to the question yeah it's in the next page yeah right yeah yeah so the exposure condition what they have given is severe for me right now for severe exposure condition, I'll go to the PPT. This is my severe exposure condition. So we got that the exposure condition is severe. For severe exposure condition, uh, maximum water cement ratio free is 0 0.45, which we have saw, which are seen there. And minimum cement content we have to use 320, right? These things we need to uh, take from here. Now what we are supposed to do, we'll go back. Yeah, so it is given maximum is 0 0.45, but we are adopting 0 0.40. So my 0 0.40 is less than 0 0.45. Hence, it is okay, right? As far as possible, uh, what maximum water cement ratio, what we are going to adopt should not go beyond 0 0.45. That is where the uh, code is restricting us. So we'll try to keep it within that limit. So it is 0 0.40 now. Next, once that is done, next what we are supposed to do? Yeah, selection of water content. Refer the table two of IS 10262-2009. Note down the value of the quantity of water that is required for 20 mm aggregate. Then what do you understand by this? See, now this water, whatever we require, no, it depends on the aggregate that you're going to use. I'll go back to that. We'll see that again. So if you see it here, no, maximum water content per cubic meter of concrete for a nominal maximum size of aggregate. So in the question, I'll go back to the question. You need to be with me. It will take some time. 
Iya. Yeah, it's given here, right? Maximum nominal size of aggregate they have given 20 mm. So if the maximum nominal size is 20 mm, according to the table, nominal maximum size is 20 here. It's written. So the maximum water content what we can give is 186, right? So the same thing you can see in the PDF what I have here. So it's written 186. We'll go back to the PPT. Yeah. So you can see here the required water content what they have taken for 20 mm aggregate it is 186 liters right but another thing we need to understand here which i already explained to you this water this table what they have prepared no this paper this table is prepared for only 50 mm slump okay they have done they have standardized this table they have written it here the water content in this table of 4.8 is for angular coarse aggregate that is if you're using an angular coarse aggregate and if your slump is up to 50 mm you can make use of this table and that means 186 is a maximum water content what i can use but the question what is given to us yeah the question what is given to us he's telling us you have to use 100 mm slump question is in the table it is 50 mm but the question what is given is 100 mm that means we have to put a correction factor to this so the same correction factor is already mentioned here it is telling us that the required water content may be established by trial or an increase by about three percent for every additional 25 mm if, if you are going for every additional 25 mm of slump you have to give a correction factor of three percent right that's it this is understood now so i'll go back and we'll apply that so what we are supposed to do 186 is what we require but our slump is how much? I'll do a quick calculation here. Just try to understand. See, the table what is given to us is for 50 mm, right? Good. There we have to give maximum water of 186. But the question what is given to us, he's telling us to keep a slump of 100 mm. I'll do it here. 100. Okay. So that means from 50 to 100, how much we have jumped? We have jumped by 50 mm. For so we have jumped by 50 mm. And what the code is saying for every, I'll write it here again, concentrate. Yeah, the code is telling for every 50, 25 mm jump, not 50, for every 25 mm jump, you have to put a correction factor of 3%. We are jumping by how much percent? We are jumping by 50 mm. For 25, if it is 3%, then for 50 mm, how much it has to be jumped? 3 plus 3, it has to be 6% jump, right? 6% additional water we need to consider to take care of that correction factor. The same thing you can see it here. Say for estimated water content for 100 mm slump is equal to 186 is what we got plus six because this is a correction factor what i'm applying so six percent of this water six divided by 100 into 186 is what you are supposed to do because 183 is from the table that we are getting right you try to do this we are getting 196 liters right good now the interesting part is that we have from the chapter one and chapter two from chapter two we understood that what super plasticizer can do for us super plasticizer is going to increase the what uh, is going to uh, reduce the water content in our concrete and it's going to improve the workability right so we'll try to take the help of this uh, super plasticizer right because it is given in the question again because these people are using super plasticizer in their concrete if i go back yeah chemical admixture what they're using is super plasticizer okay so then since super plasticizer is used the water content can be reduced up to 30 percent now again if you ask me why it is 30 percent all this has come from the a uh, lot of research and lot of experimental investigation. But again, based on trials with the super plasticizers, water content reduction of 25% has been achieved practically. What they're trying to release 30% theoretically we, we can tell, but when we try to do the real mixed design, we are going to get up to 29% of uh, water content can be reduced. So what they have done now, percentage of the water content will be 100 minus 29, which comes out to be 71, right? So hence the arrived water content will be, we got it as 197 liters into, you multiply this by 0 0.71 because percentage of water content is 71 because this 100 we have taken, minus 29% we can do the deduction, right? Actually 30 we can do, but here we are considering 29. You can do 30 also, no one is going to stop you, but we'll take 29, 100 minus 29, that is 71% of water content. So how much water we have got 197 liters of water we are actually we actually need to put but since we are putting the plasticizer this water content can be reduced if you want to reduce this what we are supposed to do 197 into 0 0.71 which comes out to be 140 liters that means what has happened now what has happened now we have our water from 197 it has come to 140 liters first thing and then we'll try to make use of the super plasticizer that's it 
so in this what will happen no we know that if water cement ratio is less strength is going to come down so we have reduced the water no from 197 to 140 so for the same water cement ratio our strength what we are supposed to get no will be getting more strength and that is how the super plasticizer is going to do its work yeah right so up to here it's clear next is calculation of cement content it's very simple cement content is equal to water content by water cement ratio that means it is a very simple thing actually water cement ratio is this is how we try to write water cement ratio how much we had taken if you remember water cement ratio we had taken 0 0.40 right yeah now what we need to find we need to find the cement content so what you need to water is known to us 140 liters and this ratio is known to us 0 0.40 what we are supposed to find cement no just cross multiply if cement goes to that side then cement will be whatever is your water you divide it by water cement ratio 0 0.40 what is the water that you are going to use 140 liters so 140 you divide it by 0 0.40 you are going to get 350 kg per cubic meter of the cement we are going to use in this mixed design now this is what we are getting we need to understand with the code so as per is 456-2000 for rcc work minimum cement content in kg per cubic meter for exposure of mild we can have we should have minimum 300 kg per cubic meter for moderate it has to be 300 for severe it has to be minimum 320 huh? and for very severe it is 340 and for extreme it is 360 now understand what is our exposure condition our exposure condition is yeah yeah okay give me a minute i'll be back Our exposure condition is severe, right? So we'll go back here. Our exposure condition is severe. And according to the IS456 code book, we'll see that also. Yeah. So if your exposure condition is severe, your minimum cement content has to be 320, right? Minimum it has to be 320. And how much we got from the calculation? We'll see that. From the calculation, we are getting 350. So 320 is greater than, I mean, 350 is greater than 320. Hence, whatever we have done is correct. So in this case, exposure condition given in the problem has severe. Therefore, minimum cement content should be 320 kg per cubic meter. And we are getting 350 from here. I'll do it. We are getting 350 from here. And we are also greater than the minimum requirement given by the code. Hence, it is okay. Done. So up to here, I hope it's clear. Next, it becomes very clear. Now, proportion of a volume of a coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. So, if you refer table 2 of IS 1026-2009, note down the volume of coarse aggregate corresponding to 20 mm size aggregate and fine aggregate zone 1 of water cement ratio of 0 0.5, which is equal to 0 0.60. In this present case, water cement ratio, what we have taken is 0 0.40, isn't it? In this particular case, the water cement ratio, what we have taken is 0 0.40. Yeah, so you need to understand one more point here. Just concentrate on this portion. It's a bit tricky, but it's very simple to understand. What they're trying to tell us, refer table two of IS 10262-2009. Note down the volume of a coarse aggregate corresponding to 20 mm size aggregate and fine aggregate, right? So for this, what is trying to tell is, I'll take you to that table. So this is a table what we need to refer. That is table 4.9, hmm? first thing. Second thing, before understanding the table, See the question again. In the question, they have given us few things. Go back to the question again. Yeah. So it's given here from the sieve analysis, hmm, confirming to table two of IS 383. And the fine aggregate, what we're using, no, it is belonging to zone one, right? The fine aggregate, what is what we have, it belongs to zone one. And what is the aggregate we are using? The size of the aggregate we are using is 20 mm. So now you may find it a bit difficult to understand since it is the uh, first time you are learning it. But once you finish this uh, lecture, you'll be in a position to understand in a more better way. So even though you're not able to understand, just continue with me. It's very simple to learn. Yeah. So what you're supposed to do now, come to this table. Hmm? Only one thing you need to remember. Always we are going to use of, always we are going to make use of uh, 20 mm aggregates only. So my job will be very simple now, right? Anyone can do this. See, this is that, uh, give me a minute. Yeah, this is a table where I need to concentrate. That's it. Simple it is. Okay. Yeah. 
so nominal size of aggregate always it is 20 mm only for me so always i have to refer this only most of the time now what is the sand that we saw no the fine aggregate what is trying to tell us to which zone it belong that you need to understand to zone 1 isn't it that is fine aggregate what we have confirming to zone 1 of table 4 forget about the table we'll see what is table what table is that but zone 1 is given that's it go here under this where is zone 2 zone 1 this is zone 4 for me zone 3 zone 2 and zone 1 isn't it so in the zone 1 what is the value written here it is 0.6 this value what it has written no 0.6 that's it you just need to remember the value 0.6 come back to this particular sheet and you can see here what they have done they have taken 0.6 here okay that's it very simple next again there is a small trick here that you also need to understand right yeah just concentrate see now give me a minute yeah yeah what is written here the values given in the table this table is applicable only for water cement ratio of 0.5 gone right that means this water this table what we have no this is applicable only for a water cement ratio of 0.5 and based on the aggregates in the saturated surface dry condition if the water cement ratio is other than 0.5 what is our condition our water cement ratio is 0.4 that means this again table values what we have taken they are not going to work out for my calculation right yeah so is used then apply the correction factor so this is a rule what we need to follow okay it's very simple rule what is trying to tell no for first forget about this word decrease here and here yeah for every increase of 0.05 in the water cement ratio okay if you are increasing your water cement ratio for every 0.05 in the water cement ratio the above values that means this value is what we got no no like 0.6 or whatever should be decreased now you remove this word increase here yeah the above values will be decreased by 0.01 that means for every increase in the water cement ratio I'll put it in this way of 0.05 the above values what we have no this you have to decrease it by how much 0.01 one way of understanding now the other way of understanding is that take out this increase now and take out yeah this decrease here now you understand this for every decrease by 0.05 in the water cement ratio see how how do you understand this this entire table is made for 0.5 water cement ratio now let us say i have taken a water cement ratio of 0.6 that means from 0.5 my water cement ratio has gone to 0.6 that means it is a increase for me so then i have to understand in the first way that is for every increase in the water cement ratio of 0.05 the above value should be reduced by 0.01 now let us say for our case the water cement ratio what we have is 0.4 isn't it that means this 0.4 is less than 0.5 now you understand that is for every decrease now it has decreased no from 0.5 my value has gone to 0.4 that means it has decreased for every decrease of water cement ratio of 0.05 okay the above values whatever we get from here you have to increase this above values by 0.01 respectively right i hope this much is clear now same thing we'll try to apply in our problem see here so in the present case the water cement ratio what we have is 0.40 i'll write it here for time being yeah so it will be very simple to understand right so our water cement ratio is 0.4 isn't it right and the table what we made i'll write it here 0.5 is a table table we have and from the table how much we got 0.6 is the value we got right if you don't remember i'll go back to that again yeah so this is the value we got 0.6 isn't it yeah so from the table we got it as 0.6 i'll write it here again again the table says that for every 0.05 increase in the water cement ratio you have to decrease it by 0.01 in the above values right now what has happened 0.5 is a table value but our value is 0.4 that means it is a decrease for every decrease of 0.05 you have to increase increase the above value by 0.01 right good so from 0.5 to 0.4 how much decrease has happened 
point one decrease has happened. Simple. Zero point five minus zero point four. If you do, you will get zero point one. Now you try to put zero point one here. Zero point one. And do this uh, elementary calculation. What we used to do, right? If a one banana, if it is five rupees, five five bananas, how much rupees? For zero point zero five, what is cement ratio increase? If you have to decrease it by zero point zero one, if there is an increase of zero point one, how much we have to decrease? It's very simple. Do the cross multiplication. I'll do it manually. Zero point one into zero point zero one, and if I divide that by zero point zero five, I'm going to get zero point zero two. If you do this, zero point one into zero point zero one. Divide by 0.05, you are going to get how much? 0.02, right? So we have gone from 0.5 to 0.4. We have gone. That means we have decreased. Right? We have gone down. So this value, this much value, you have to increase. That means you can see it here. No. Now I'll try to read out this sentence. In the, in the present case, the water cement ratio is 0.40. That is for every 0.1 change in the water cement ratio. The volume of core segregate is increased by 0.02. That is what we have got here. Therefore, the corrected proportion of a volume of a core segregate for the water cement ratio will be how much? 0.60. This is the value what we got. For this, you add this 0.02. So 0.6 plus 0.02 will come out to be 0.62. Therefore, the volume of core segregate is 0.60. 0.62. Now again, there is one more catch you need to understand. This this is going long, but still. You need to understand it. Any question? That's it. Yeah. So, for pumpable concrete, this value should be reduced by ten percent. Therefore, whatever value you are going to get, now you have to reduce it by ten percent. That is hundred minus ten is equal to ninety percent of the above value. So, therefore, the volume of a core segregate will be zero point six two into you take ninety divided by hundred of ninety percent, which comes out to be zero point five six. Therefore, volume of fine aggregate will be. This is for coarse aggregate, and from total, if you deduct the coarse aggregate, you will get the fine aggregate. Therefore, volume of fine aggregate will be one minus zero point five six, which is equal to zero point four four. Now, why we have to do that? Again, it is told by the code, so it's written here. Just go through this once again. See what the code is trying to tell is. Yeah, See, just concentrate on these words. If the placement of a concrete is done by a pump. Or whenever is required to work around congested reinforcing steel. What do you mean by reinforcing steel? Suppose when you put up the column and all, no, we try to put more reinforcement. Usually when we do structure detailing, we don't try to do because the code says that this is something RCC try to understand. The code says that the maximum uh, percentage of the steel what you can give in the column is four percent when you are not when you are doing lapping. And if you are not doing a lapping, if you make use of the couplers and all. Uh, you have to go up to six percent, but practically when we do structural design and all, no, we try to keep up to two point five maximum, not more than that. Okay, but just just in case, let us see. There's a lot of conjunction. Yeah, you can see here, no. Let us say this is a column. Okay, for example, consider this as column only. You can see a lot of reinforcement here. Now, if your concrete is a bit harsh, it is not flowable. If it is not pumpable, then your core segregate will not pass through this, right? So it will get stuck here. So, if you want your concrete to pass through that, it has to be a very flowable concrete. That's what it's trying to tell us. If the placement of a concrete is done by pump, or if there is a concreting being done in the congested reinforcing steel, it is it may be desirable to reduce the estimated core segregate because if you have more core segregate, then what will happen? A concrete will stuck. So instead of that, we'll try to decrease the core segregate and we'll try to increase the fine aggregate, right? So that is why it may be desirable to reduce the estimated core segregate contained. By about ten percent. That is why we have done the ten percent reduction, right? Yeah, I hope you have got an idea why those things are. If you don't want to do, you, you you don't have to do that. No issues. But tomorrow when you put the because doing a mixed design is not a big issue for me. But once I do this mixed design, no people working in the site also should feel it. Uh, in a I mean they should feel happy while pouring the concrete. If there is a um, congestion here and if your concrete is not able to flow here, no. Then they have to use vibrator for a long period of time. Then again, the cement paste will come out. There will honeycombs and all. So whatever you have done on the paper, the same has to be implemented, no? So if that implementation should happen, we need to understand what this site people will uh, face the problem. Taking those things in consideration, we do all these things, keeping safety in our mind. Yeah. So that's it. Another two things are left out. Yeah. Right. I hope it's understood up to here. So that is why we have gone here. Now you understood, no? From zero point six two, we came to zero point five six, and now we are getting zero point four four. If you keep the same thing, no? 
what would have happened the finite rate would have come down if finite rate come then cement pressure will be less so congestion will be more that is the reason we have reduced it by 10% right yeah the last is a mixed calculation that's it the last thing is very simple now what you are supposed to do if a volume of concrete we know we always do our calculation for 1 cubic meter to find the volume of cement mass of cement divided by specific gravity of cement into 1 divided by 1000 quickly you do that mass of cement how much we had taken 350 is what we had got if you don't remember now i'll go back to that quickly we had got 350 right yeah we have 350 here you divide it by 3.15 this is specific gravity of cement how do you get that that is already given in the uh, uh, main things i mean here they have given specific gravity of cement is 3.15 good so multiply this very simple 1 divided by 1000 comes out to be 0.11 cubic meter of the cement is required volume of water again mass of water divided by specific gravity of water into 1 1 divided by 1000 mass of water is 140 quickly i'll take you there yeah 140 we got here 140 liters put that 140 there okay yeah divided by 1 specific gravity of water is 1 okay uh, into 1 divided by 1000 comes out to be 0.140 cubic meter Super plastic is at two point zero percent by mass of cementitious material. Always remember when we take super plastic sizes and all, no, we take in terms of uh, we take in the percentage with respect to the cement. So that is why mass of chemical admixtures will be two percent. It's written two percent here in the question. It is given two percent. I guess. Yeah. Where is that given? Okay. Okay, it's not given, but they have taken. They have assumed it to be two percent. It's okay. It again depends. If you don't want to take it two percent, one and a half. I mean, two two and a half you can take. So here they have taken two percent. It's okay. We'll go with two percent only. So two divided by hundred into you have to take the mass of cement. The mass of cement is three fifty. Always we take this with respect to the cement. So do that. You are going to get seven cubic meter of chemical admixture. Now coming to the volume of yeah, coming to the volume of chemical admixture, mass of chemical admixture divided by specific gravity. Into one divided by thousand. This mass we have got here seven divided by specific gravity of admixture. You get this from the person who is going to uh, you know uh, give this admixture to you. There are many companies like one good company is Sika, uh, right? So Sika is a company uh, which provide you this super plastic sizer. You have to ask them. They are going to give you the uh, specific gravity of the admixture. That's it. So multiply this. You are going to get zero point zero zero six. Next volume of all in aggregates is very simple. How do you find volume of all in aggregates? Whatever is the volume of concrete, in that you try to de uh, deduct all these things. That is a a minus b minus c minus d. That's it. That means a minus b plus c plus d. A is how much? One cubic meter always minus volume of cement. Zero point one one. You minus that. Okay, minus. You open a bracket here. So zero point one one. You will add that plus volume of water. Zero point one four zero plus. Zero point zero zero six. If you try to do no, this is volume of all in aggregates. That is zero point seven four six cubic meter. Now this is all aggregate. This this zero point seven four three. It includes your coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, and all. But we want to separate out coarse aggregate and we want to separate out fine aggregate, right? So therefore, mass of coarse aggregate is equal to E into volume of coarse aggregate into specific gravity of coarse aggregate into thousand. This is equal to E. E is this value what we are getting? Okay, E in the sense this alphabet E stands for this volume in all aggregate is zero point seven four three into volume of coarse aggregate. So volume of coarse aggregate is zero point five six. Yeah, from where we got that zero point five six? Yeah, we got it from here, right? Zero point five six volume of coarse aggregate is zero point five six. Good. So multiply that zero point seven four three into zero point five six into specific gravity of coarse aggregate. It's given in the question. And this you get from uh, sieve analysis. Okay, two point seven four is what you have got. Simple. Then uh, you multiply this by thousand. You are you're getting one one four zero kg of coarse aggregate. Similarly, try to do it for fine aggregate. E, e is again zero point seven four three into volume of fine aggregate that you get from the previous. It's given here zero point four four. Multiply by zero point four four into two point seven four into thousand comes out to be eight ninety six kg. That's it. Finish. So finally, we have come to a conclusion. For this particular M30 grade and whatever uh, things he has given, no, we can provide this particular mixed design. That is 340 of uh, cement, uh, 140 kg per cubic meter of water. Fine aggregate will be 896. Coarse aggregate will be uh, 1140. Chemical admixtures will be 7, and water cement ratio is 0.40. Now what we have done? We have just made a single trial. Now we need to practically check this. With the help of a slum test, and once the slum test passes, then we have to do the cube test. And if both of them passes, then only we can say that for this particular concrete, 
of M30 grade. This proportion you can use freely at the site and you can do the construction. All right. Try to take one more problem on the mixed design and we'll try to understand that. So this is the question what we have. Uh, the, the, this time we need to design our concrete for M40 grade of concrete. The type of cement is OPC, ordinary Portland cement of 43 grade. Type of mineral admixture, we are making use of mineral admixture in this particular numerical. So he's telling us to make use of flash. Maximum nominal size of aggregate is 20 mm. Minimum cement content is 320. Maximum water cement ratio is 0.45. Again, they require a slump of uh, 100 mm. Uh, exposure condition, it is severe. Method of concrete placing, they, they are doing it with the help of a pump here. Then degree of supervision, it is good here. Type of aggregate, crushed angular aggregate. Maximum cement content is 450 kg per cubic meter. They are going to make use of super plasticizers. And rest all things we have already understood. Now, the first thing, always the step one will be target strength for the mixed proportioning. How do you do that? The formula is straightforward. F dash CK is equal to FCK plus 1.65. FCK, they are asking us to do it for M40 grade of concrete. So 40, it will be, I'll write it here. 40, yeah, plus 1.65. And S is the standard deviation. For 40 grade, the standard deviation will be uh, 5, I guess. Let me check it out. Go to the next. Yeah, the standard deviation is 5. Again, we'll quickly go through that. If someone is finding it difficult to understand from where we are getting this. Yeah, so for that M40 grid standard deviation is fine, right? Yeah, this is done. Next, we are getting, if you do that, we are getting 48.25 Newton per mm square. What do you mean by this? Even though I'm assuming my grade to be 40, but when I do that mixed design, no, this will be my target. Always I'll go for a more target because concrete and all, you cannot predict the nature of a concrete. So always as the engineers, we try to be on a more safer side. So this is my target. So when I target for 48.25, at least I'll end up by getting more than 40, right? It's like, suppose in the examination, if you want to target for 100 marks, 100 out of 100 marks, huh? then you cannot uh, learn only five chapters and go, right? You have to study six or seven chapters so that you can score 100 out of 100 marks, isn't it? Only by scoring, only by studying three chapters, it's not possible. So at least if you want to score 100 out of 100, if you have eight modules, right? At least six, at least uh, six to seven modules you need to learn properly so that you can get this. So this is a targeting is for hundred. If you want to get hundred, then you have to put more efforts. That that is the reason we always go in this way. Forty eight point two five. So forty is what I require, but I get forty eight point two five. Yeah. So once this is done, next step is again very simple. Next step is selection of water cement ratio. So we know that maximum water cement ratio is point four five, which is given in the question. So based on the experience, you can take it as 0 0.40. Again, as I mentioned, you need not take it 0 0.40. You can take any value here, but maximum it should it should not go beyond 0.45. So as per IS 456-2000, these are the things what we have. For mild, it is 0.55, moderate 0.5, severe 0.45, and so on, right? So if you're not able to understand from where it's where it's coming, try to follow my previous lecture where I've explained it in detail. Again, I'll not explain in detail for this lecture as well. Exposure severe condition, what we are considering is 0 0.40, which is less than 0 0.45, hence it is okay. So again, if you want, I'll go for the exposure condition. Yeah, so this is the exposure condition here. For the severe exposure condition, we are referring RCC now. For severe exposure condition, maximum free water cement ratio, what you have to take is 0 0.45, and that's what we have done it here. Right. So 0 0.4, what we are assumed, maximum is 0 0.45, which is less, hence it is okay. Next is selection of water content. Now again, refer table two of IS10262, note down the value of quantity of water content for 20 mm aggregate, right? So here, what is the slump that is required? So here the slump, what is required is for us 100 mm. 100 mm is a slump that is required for us. So for 100 mm slump, what is a, and for 20 mm corresponding aggregates, you, are, you have to refer this particular table. I'll take you to that table, see. It's given here. We, we have 20 mm aggregate and corresponding to 20 mm aggregates, the maximum water content what I can use is 186, right? But this table what we have, no? But this table, what they have prepared, this table is prepared for angular aggregate and for the slump value of 50 mm. That's it. This, is ta this table is valid. But in our question, that slump what we have got is 100 mm, right? That means we cannot directly take this 186 value. We have to do some correction factor. Now, what is the correction factor? The correction factor says that for every 25 mm increase in the slump, 
you have to increase this value by 3%, right? That's it. For every 25 mm increase in the slump, increase this value by 3%. Now from 50 to 100, what is the uh, increase? From 50 to 100, the increase is 50, right? 50 plus 50 comes out to be 100. So if for 25 it is 3, for 50, how much it has to be? For 50, it has to be 6% increase. That's it. The same thing you can see here, what we have done in manual calculation. I'll take you there. Yeah. So here you can see the for estimated water content for 100 mm slump will be 186 we got from the table plus you add 6% to that 6 of 100 into 186 for this 186 you have to add 6% okay it comes out to be 197 liters now we are using a super plasticizer so the water content can be reduced up to 30% right now but practically when you make use of SNF so when I say of uh, super plasticizer no I'll write it here So the plasticizer, what I'm supposed to use is, usually what we use is SNF, that is sulfonated, sul, yeah, sulfonated naphthalene formaldehyde. Okay, this is a super plasticizer what we are going to use. So it has been found that uh, up to 29% of water can be reduced here, 29%. Now again, as I mentioned, it depends on what, from which company you're bringing the super plasticizer, right? So based on the company also, it all depends. But here we'll take it as SNF and let us say 29% there is a decrease in the water. If 29% there is a decrease in the water, percentage of water content will be 100%. Full, here we are taking full, right? So 100 minus how much you're going to do the reduction? 29%. 100 minus 29 comes out to be 71. Now hence, this water has to be reduced by 70, I mean, you have to take 71% uh, of this water. So hence the arrived water content will be 197 into 0 0.71. That comes out to be 140 liters. That remaining water, what you want to know, that you are going to get from super plasticizer because that super plasticizer is going to give me 30%, 29% of that, right? Yeah. So now calculation of cement and fly ash. Yeah, here you have to understand one thing. In the previous uh, lecture, what we had done, we had calculated only the cement content, but here this time we're making use of fly ash. So fly ash is a pozzolona. So it all depends how you want the mixed design and all. In the question itself, they have given that you have to make use of fly ash. So now both are my cementaceous content. So hence cementaceous material that is cement and fly ash together will be. How do you find that? Again, it's a very simple calculation that you need to follow. I'll do it. That we know that water cement ratio. We know water cement ratio, what we have adopted is 0 0.4. We have got water. We have got water from here, 140 liters. 0.4 is ready for us. So with this, if you cross multiply, we'll get cement content, therefore cement. But here, this is not cement. It becomes cementaceous material because this C contains your cement plus fly ash together. So what you're supposed to do, water content, what is water 140, you divide it by 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is my water cement ratio. Try to do it manually you're going to get the answer as 350 kg per cubic meter, right? That's it. So once this is done, now come back here. As per IS456-2000 for RCC work, minimum cement content for exposure of mild, it is this much, moderate, it is this much, and so on. What we are referring is ours is the severe condition, right? For severe condition, what is the maximum, what is the minimum cement you have to use? 320. If you're not able to follow here, go back here. For the severe condition, you have to make use of 320 is a minimum cement content. And how much we are getting? We are getting 350. So my 350 is greater than 320. Hence, this is also okay. Now, there's one more catch here. Since we're using a cementitious material content, what you can do, no? you can increase this by 10%. Whatever answer you're getting, that 350, you have to increase it by 10%. So for cementitious material content is equal to 350 into 1.10, which comes out to be 385 kg per cubic meter. So if you're increasing this, uh, then again, what will happen? There will be a change in the water content. So water content is 140. Now this time your cementitious material content has gone to 385. So the water cement ratio is equal to how much? 140, you divide it by 385. You're going to get 0 0.364, right? I hope up to here it is clear. Next, we'll go to step five. Before that, now, as I mentioned, this 385 is what I'm getting, no? This includes my cement as well as fly ash. But I need to exactly know how much cement and how much fly ash out of this. So for that, what we usually tell, we usually say 30% of that we are going to make use of fly ash out of the 100%. That means out of 385, in this 30% we'll add fly ash, remaining will be the cement. So 
fly us at 30% of the total cementitious content will be how much? We got 385. Take 30% of that. 30 divided by 100 comes out to be 115 kg per cubic meter. Therefore, 115 kg per cubic meter is my fly ash. So therefore, cement will be total content. That is 385 minus fly ash will give you the total cement content. So this 385 is a cementitious content. Out of that, if I deduct the fly ash content, this 270 what is left out, this is my cement content. Altogether, 38 altogether it is cementitious. Yeah. Next is step five. Proportion of volume of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate. The moment you come here, two things you need to understand. First is try to see the question given in which zone is your fi fine aggregate. So it's given here fine aggregate confirming to zone one of table four. So it is confirming to zone one. The moment you see this zone one, you have this table. Yeah, you have this table. Okay, now try to find. See, for this, you need to understand what is the maximum aggregate size. Here, always we are using 20 mm aggregate size is my maximum. Yeah, so 20 mm is my maximum aggregate size. So this is a table. This is a row I need to look. What is the zone given? The zone given for our question is zone one. So corresponding to that, you check a value here. That means corresponding to zone one. And for 20 mm aggregate, I need to take how much? 0 0.6. This is 0 0.6. Right? You can see here, this is 0 0.6. But again, there is a catch. This particular table, what is prepared, no? Based on the experience of the research people, this is considered by taking water cement ratio 0 0.5. For water cement ratio 0 0.5, this particular table is prepared. But the water cement ratio, what we have adopted is 0 0.4, isn't it? That means, again, we have to put a correction factor. Now, what is that correction factor that we'll try to see here? Yeah, so that correction factor, what we need to consider is this one. So for water cement ratio of 0 0.5, hmm, we've got answer as 0 0.6, isn't it? But our water cement ratio is 0 0.4. For that, how much value you have to take, right? So for that, you have to put this correction factor. The correction factor is that for every 0 0.05 increase in the water cement ratio, I'll read it once again. For every 0 0.05 increase in the water cement ratio, you have to decrease the above value. That is this value, you know, this value what you're getting 0 0.6. You have to decrease it by 0 0.01. That is for every 0 0.05 increase in the water cement ratio, you have to decrease the above value. That is this value what you get from the table what we saw, no? 0 point. That you have to reduce by 0 0.01. But again, there is a catch here. So if you see this table what we have, no? it is prepared for, prepared for 0 0.5. Our water cement ratio we got is a 0 0.4. That means from 0 0.5 to 0 0.4, we have come down. No? If we have come down, then this value has to be increased. Okay, one way of understanding. Let us say the table what is prepared is for 0 0.5, but I got a water cement ratio of 0 0.55. Now from 0 0.5 to 0 0.55, we are increasing. I mean, we have gone up, right? So if we have gone up, then the value what you're getting, no, this value, then you have to decrease that value. It's vice versa. If water cement ratio goes beyond this 0.5, you have to decrease this value. But if your water cement ratio is less than 0.5, you have to increase that value, right? Now, from 0 0.5 to 0 0.4, the water ratio, water cement ratio has come. Therefore, there is a decrease of how much? From 0.5 to 0.4, there is a decrease of 0.1. So, since there is a decrease, we have to increase the value. So, we need to increase the value of i. i in the sense, this value, okay? This value. Now, to put it in a better way, let us say, last time also we referred the same problem. Now, let us say, uh, yeah. So, let us say, this, no, let us say this is not zone one. For example, let us say zone three is given here. So, if zone three is given, so what, what would have happened? I have to go back here. Corresponding to zone three, we try what is given here. So, corresponding to zone three, zone three is here, right? This is my zone three. And this 20, answer will be 0 0.64. This time you should have taken 0 0.64. Suppose if zone three was given, so we'll take 0 0.64. Then what would have happened? Then here, instead of 0 0.6, I would have written 0. Point, how much it is? 0 0.64 I would have written. I would have, I would have written 0 0.64 here. Then based on that, your values would have changed, right? In this way, you need to carry out that. Well, yeah, so I'll erase everything. So I hope up to here it is clear. Yeah. So now what we are supposed to, we need to increase the value by 0 0.01. So for 0 0.05, you have to reduce it by 0 0.01. Therefore for 0 0.1, because here there is a decrease of 0 0.1, no? 
how much you have to do it's very simple cross multiply for 0.1 decrease okay 0.1 into 0.01 then you divide this by 0.05 so you are going to get 0.02 that means for corresponding to 0.4 this value will come out to be 0.02 okay this will come out to be 0.02 i hope you have got an idea how it has to be done just in case if you have still doubt you can put it in the comment box i'll explain it there right so this 0.02 will come so this answer to get this 0.02 you have to apply this method that's it hmm? for 0.05 increase i have to decrease my uh, that above value this value by 0.01 that's it right yeah so 0.02 we need to take now what they have done after this so that is why you can see the value written here they got 0.02 hmm? therefore the corrected proportion of volume of course aggregate for the water cement ratio will be 0.60 we got from the table for that we have to apply a correction factor of 0.02 so 0.6 plus 0.02 comes out to be 0.62 therefore the volume of course aggregate is 0.62 but again in the question they are told they are going to do the concreting by pump so if you are going to do the concrete by pump where it is given it is given here pumping method of concrete placing is pumping so if you are doing a pumping then we want more fine aggregate so that is why therefore for pumping the concrete this value should be reduced by 10% hmm? now again this 10% you can even reduce it by 8% also or 9 or 10 it depends but the code is telling based on the experience you have to reduce it by 10% but again depends on the site conditions and all how much you want to reduce but here we will take 10 only therefore 10 100 minus 10 if i do no 90% of the above value you have to take therefore the volume of course aggregate will be 0.62 is actually what we got but we'll reduce it by 10% so 90 divided by 100 which will come out to be 0 0.56 if this is 0 0.56 then what will be volume of fine aggregate if a volume of fine aggregate will be total total will take one one minus 0 0.56 if i do i'll get 0 0.44 right that's it so if you add this 0 0.56 plus 0 0.44 which will come out to be one that is a volume of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate that's it next coming to the mixed calculation volume of concrete always we they speak in terms of cubic meter so it is one cubic meter volume of cement will be mass of cement divided by specific gravity of cement into one divided by thousand mass of cement is how much 270 from where we got go back here it is it is uh, written here 270 it is written 270 here So volume of fly ash, the volume of fly ash is equal to mass of fly ash divided by specific gravity of fly ash into 1 divided by 1000. Fly ash, how much we got? 115. We got fly ash as 115. So again, specific gravity of fly ash, they are going to do. You have, you have to do the specific gravity test on the fly ash in the lab. And from there, you have to you got this value as 2.2 into 1 divided by 1000 comes out to be 0 0.052. Next is volume of water. Volume of water will be mass of water divided by specific gravity of water into 1 divided by 1000, which comes out to be 140 divided by 1. If you do this, no, again 0 0.140. Specific gravity of water is always 1000, so it's written here. Next is super plastic hazard. Here we are going to make use of 2%. Even as I mentioned, you can take 1.5%. Again, depends on your site conditions and all. Yeah, therefore, mass of chemical admixture will be always remember admixture we try to add in terms of. Uh, percentage of the cementitious material okay so that means 385 is the total cementitious material isn't it 385 for this we'll try to put 2 percent 2 divided by 100 will come out to be 7.74 cubic meter therefore volume of chemical admixture will be mass of chemical admixture divided by specific gravity of chemical admixture into 1 divided by 1000 mass we got from here 7.7 .7 divided by specific gravity you have to do the lab test or you have to ask the supplier who is giving you a chemical admixture to uh, tell, uh, tell him what is your specific gravity of the admixture that you have provided into 1 divided by 1000 comes out to be 0 0.07 that's it once you're done with this next last one is volume in all in aggregates to find the volume in all aggregates whatever answer you got here that is volume of concrete one minus volume of cement minus volume of fly ash minus volume of water minus volume of uh, chemical plast admixture if you try to do you know whatever volume is left out that will be my coarse aggregate and fine aggregate volume so that is why volume of all in aggregate will be a a in the sense this one this a b c notation what they have given minus b plus c plus d plus e 
which will be 1 minus 0 0.06 plus 0 0.52 plus 0.14 plus 0. Point, comes out to be 0 0.715 cubic meter. So this is all in aggregate. This includes your fine aggregate and coarse aggregate. Therefore, if I want to individually find how much is coarse aggregate, mass of coarse aggregate will be F. F in the sense this thing, that is volume of all in aggregate into volume of coarse aggregate into specific gravity of coarse aggregate into 1000. All right. Okay. They have not done this. Okay. It's done here. Okay. Therefore, which will come out to be 0 0.715 into volume of course aggregate is 0 0.56 which you found it from here volume of course aggregate and then uh, 2.74 you get it from the lab result otherwise they have given it here you have to refer here 2.74 is a specific gravity and specific gravity of fine aggregate is 2.74 yeah right so into thousand you do thousand ninety seven kg is a course aggregate similarly yeah similarly for fine aggregate okay you take it up here if you're getting confused this series of lectures so in the initial uh, for the syllabus they have mentioned it here concept of mixed design with and without admixture so far we had solved two numericals that was with the help of admixture now we'll try to solve another two numericals without the help of admixtures right so this is what we are going to concentrate everything remains the same only the thing is we'll not add the admixture here yeah so this is a question what we have Design a concrete mixed proportion for M20 grade of concrete is telling. Grade designation is M20. Type of cement is OPC 43 grade cement. Maximum nominal size is 20. Minimum cement current is 320. And then uh, maximum water cement ratio is 0.55. Here the for the slump they require 75 mm. Workability is 75. Exposure condition is mild. Degree of supervision is good. And this is a coarse crushed angular aggregate 450 mm, 450 kg per cubic meter is the maximum cement. Right? Yeah. Chemical admixture. It's not used here. Right? Rest all things we know. Yeah. Now again, as usual, go for this target strength for mixed proportioning. F dash CK is equal to FCK plus 1.65. What we how much strength we require? M20 grade. So F dash CK will be 20 plus 1.65 into 4. This time this standard deviation is 4 because if you go back to the table, quickly I'll take you to the table. Yeah. For M20, M20 falls here. So the assumed standard deviation is 4.0, right? Yeah. So we'll go there. Yeah, that is the reason they have taken four. Do this, you will get 26.60. Next is selection of water cement ratio. Maximum water cement ratio, what we can get for a mild exposure is 0 0.55 because in the question, the exposure condition is mild for us, right? For the mild exposure condition, we'll look into the table also. for a mild exposure condition okay minimum cement is 300 and maximum free water cement ratio is 0 0.55 minimum grade we have to use m20 only so 0 0.55 is given here yeah so 0 0.55 right so based on experience we can take it take this as 0 0.5 now again you can take even 0 0.45 also but here we are taking 0 0.5 and this 0 0.5 is less than 0 0.55 hence it is okay next is selection of water content so for selection of water content, we know how it has to be done, right? So the required water content may be established by an increase of about 3% for every additional 25 mm slump. First check what is the slump given for us. So the slump, what they ask, what they are asking is 75 mm. Good. So if they're asking 75 mm slump, we'll go back to this drawing once again. And here we have to find it. That is for a 20 mm size aggregate, the maximum water cement water content is 186, right? But this table is for 50 mm. In the question, the slump given is 75 mm. From 50 to 20, 75, there is an increase of 25. And for every 25 mm increase, you have to add a correction factor of 3%. So quickly, we'll try to do that 3% correction. They have done it. 186 is what we got from the table. Plus add 3% of that. 3 divided by 100 into 186 comes out to be 191.6 liters. Right. Now, since we are not going to make use of chemical admixture, this much water only we are going to take. In the previous cases, what we used to do, then we used to take 30% um, of super plasticizer and this 191.6 would, uh, would have come down. But this time, no plasticizer directly will add water only, right? Yeah. So calculation of cement content, cement content with no water content divided by water cement ratio. Water content, we are getting 191.6 divided by water cement ratio. What we have adopted is 0.6. Try to do this. 383 is a cement content what I'm getting according to the code for a... <coughs> Yeah, according to the code for the mild exposure. 
yeah for the mild exposure according to the code minimum cement content has to be 300 but we are getting more than that 300 we are getting 383 which is greater than 300 next is proportion of volume of coarse aggregate and fine aggregate for this again what we are supposed to do uh, you have to go back to the question again so he's telling us fine aggregate is belonging to zone one so fine aggregate is belonging to zone one quickly we'll see into that table yeah so for 20 mm and for zone one again that value is 0 0.60 only right and uh, next what we need to understand about the water cement ratio yeah yeah so water cement ratio for 0.5 we are getting answer of 0 0.60 yeah we are getting a, a value of 0 0.60 if a volume of fine aggregate content will be 1 minus 0 0.60 which comes out to be 0 0.40 yeah, give me a minute. Yeah, so here we don't have to do any correction factor. The reason is that in this particular table, what we have, this particular table is prepared for 0 0.5 water cement ratio. And the water cement ratio, what we have adopted is also 0 0.5, right? If I go back, what we have adopted is also 0 0.5. So there is no correction factor to be done. So directly, whatever answer you're getting from the table, we got it as 0 0.60. So I'm taking 0 0.60 as core segregate. So if a volume of fine aggregate will be 1 minus 0 0.60, which comes out to be 0 0.40. Next, final mix calculation, volume of concrete is 1 cubic meter. Volume of cement will be mass of cement divided by specific gravity of cement into 1 divided by 1000. Do this. Volume of water also, we know how to do. Just substitute all these things, right? Uh, which is equal to mass of cement it's understood uh, mass of cement yeah so this is mass of volume of water is 191.6 from here you are going to get divided by 1 into 1 divided by 1000 right and uh, yeah, there's small mistake here what you're supposed to do is don't take this specific gravity of not cement this is specific gravity of water okay this is specific gravity of water yeah, and this has to be 1 and here it is 3.15 this is okay if a volume of all in aggregate will be oh, that is a total whatever you got here that is one minus zero minus open the bracket 0 0.122 and we'll add water also that's it the remaining what you're going to get now this will be my coarse aggregate and fine aggregate if a mass of coarse aggregate will be d this is 0 0.686 into 0 0.60 into 2.68 into 1000 which will be 1103 kg everything is given if you want to see the specific gravity go back here here they have given the specific gravity yeah 2.68 is a specific gravity for coarse aggregate and 2.65 for fine aggregate so same thing you can see here yeah you have taken 2.68 for coarse and for fine aggregate they have taken 2.65 do this calculation okay if you are done with that yeah, you get the final answer. Final answer, they have not written it here. Okay, they have written it here. They have a mixed proportion for the trial number will be cement is 383, water 191, fine aggregate 727, coarse aggregate 1103, and water cement ratio is 0 0.5, right? Similarly, we'll take another problem and finish off. It will not take much time. Yeah, again for M30, you have to prepare, no? Same question, nothing changes. We'll not go in detail again, okay? Yeah, so what you're supposed to do? First thing first, F dash CK is equal to try to do this. Standard deviation will be 5 here because the grade what they have given is M30. Corresponding to M30 grade, our standard deviation is going to change. For M30, the standard deviation will be 5, right? Yeah. Hmm. So 1.65 into 5 you do. Selection of water cement ratio will adopt it as 0 0.5. And right, if you take 0 0.5 now, directly uh, you don't have to put that correction factor. That is why you will take, <coughs> we'll take 0 0.5. So here again, there is no admixture used. So whatever answer you're getting, yeah. Here you see here, one thing you need to understand. Here, what is the slump given for us in this question? Yeah. So the workability, what they want is 25 to 50 mm is a slump they require. That means our table is also made for 50 mm. So again, you don't have to put the correction factor here. You can see it, you know, estimated water content for 50 mm slump is 186 liters. That means if I go back here, this value you have to take directly, 186. Yeah, so this table is made for 50 mm and for angular aggregate, right? So for 20 mm, you have to get 186. This is for a slump of 25 to 50 mm. In the question also, they have given the same thing. So we directly add 186 in the answer. You don't have to do this um, correction factor in this particular problem. 
Yeah, so that is why you can see 186 is directly written. Cement content will be 186 divided by water cement ratio. They have taken it as 0 0.45. Okay, based on the experience, adopt a water cement ratio of 0 0.45. Okay, here they have taken water cement ratio of 0 0.45. We'll take that only, no issues, right? But then you have to put a correction factor. We'll see that how to apply again. Hmm? Yeah, so this is also okay. 413 is what I'm getting, which is greater than 350 given in the code book. That is also okay. And therefore minimum cement should be 300 kg per cubic meter. Hence, this is also okay. Yeah. Next thing is that this correction factor you have to apply since we have taken a water cement ratio of 0 0.5, 0 0.45. No? Yeah. For, yeah. For this, what you are supposed to do, go back to the question. See in the question, what is given in the question, uh, my fine aggregate belong to which fine aggregate belonging to zone one, right? For zone one, the fine aggregate is belonging to zone one. So again, same, this we will know for water cement ratio 0 0.5, we're getting 0 0.60 from the code. You quickly see that. Yeah, for a 20 mm aggregate and for zone one, for zone one, 0 0.60 is getting, we are getting, but this is for 0 0.5 water cement ratio. We have adopted a water cement ratio of 0 0.45. Then you have to apply that correction factor. Now you know how to apply that correction factor, okay? So for 0 0.05 change of water cement ratio, the volume of coarse aggregate is increased by 0 0.01. So try to do this uh, cross multiplication. We'll do it. Yeah, so what is given here? Uh, see, uh, water cement ratio for 0 0.5, this is given. We have adapted 0 0.45, right? Now, for, now do this thing from 0 0.5 to 0 0.45. What, how much is the decrease? The decrease is how much? 0 0.05, isn't it? So if this is a very straightforward now, if you refer the code here, it's given for every increase or decrease of 0 0.05 in the water cement ratio, the above value will be decreased by 0 0.01. Straightforward, you have to take 0 0.01. Yeah, straightforward, right? We are, uh, we're also getting 0 0.05. Therefore, for 0 0.05 change in the water cement ratio, volume of coarse aggregate is increased by 0 0.01. Hmm? Now, since we are decreasing from 0 0.5, we are coming down. So we have to increase it by 0 0.1. Hence, 0 0.6 is what we have got. For that, we'll try to add 0 0.01, which is equal to 0 0.6. So this is the volume of coarse aggregate 0 0.61 and volume of fine aggregate will be 1 minus 0 0.61, which will come out to be 0 0.39. Another thing we need to understand here, the thing is that here we are not going to do any pumping and all. Since we are not going to do pumping and all, no, I'll write it here, no pumping. If you refer the previous uh, to example, what we had done there, since we we're using a pumping, what we used to do, we used to reduce this uh, volume of course aggregate by 10%. But here we are not doing a pumping. It is given in the question that, uh, yeah. Yeah, then they're not mentioned anything here, how you're going to do the placing. So let us say they're not making use of pumping with the help of that shoot, they are going to do the placing. So hence it is okay. We have to ask all those things when we try to do the mixed design, no? Because uh, if you're pumping, then you have to reduce this. Since we're not doing pumping, it's okay for us. We'll not uh, decrease this content of course aggregate. Yeah, so you got up to here, up to here it is 0 0.39. Next remains very same. Volume of cement will be mass of cement by specific gravity. Mass of cement, we got 413 divided by 3.15 into 1 divided by 1000. Volume of water will be mass of water divided by specific gravity divided by into 1 by 1000. 186 is what we got divided by 1 into 1 divided by 1000, 0 0.186 we got. Volume of all in aggregate will be 1 minus 0 0.1 minus, open the bracket, 0 0.131 plus 0 0.186 will give me 0 0.68 three cubic meter. Therefore, mass of coarse aggregate will be this answer 0 0.683 into specific gravity of uh, coarse aggregate that you're going to get from here. Specific gravity is already given in the question. Yeah, coarse aggregate is 2.68 and 2.65. Add that 2.68. Uh, and then the volume of coarse aggregate, we got it from here 0 0.61 that is put here into 1000, 1117 kg. Mass of fine aggregate, same calculation. Instead of 2.68, put the specific gravity as 2.65. And uh, here the volume of uh, fine aggregate is 0 0.39. Put 0 0.39, 706 kg. That's it. Finish. Write whatever answer you're getting here. Right? Yeah. So this was all about the mixed design that we need to understand. Now, one thing you need to understand. So far, what we did, no? everything is from theoretical point of view. Practically, you need to put a moisture correction. The coarse aggregate what we get and the fine aggregate what we get. No? they will not be in a SSD condition, that is uh, saturated surface dry condition, right? 
so there are chances they'll absorb the water there will be moisture and all that moisture correction we need to apply only then we can make use of this here since we're doing it theoretically we don't have any challenges but practically when you do we'll be having a challenges to apply the moisture corrections in the fine aggregate and the coarse aggregate and corresponding to that we have to reduce the water content right so maybe in the next lecture i'll be uh, taking you to those things but this is not required from your examination point of view this is enough in examination they are going to ask all these things but we have to make ourselves ready for a practical field so in the practically uh, when we when we do mixed design practically we have to apply those uh, mix uh, correction for the bulking of fine aggregate and coarse aggregate those things we'll try to do in the next lecture right yeah so we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you